assuming that you would have the developer and town and Chris and some of the abutters here this evening, although I haven't seen too many yet. Hopefully they will show up. Uh, before we get started, I would like to see if the building commissioner or Chris have any introductory commentaries to make before we get into the meat of the order. Chris, have you? Um, not much for me. I think you accurately summarized what is in front of the board right now. Um, the applicant has filed a request to revise its plans uh, in, I think, three ways. Um, and the board is tasked under the state regulations with reviewing um, those proposed changes under the standard of whether they're substantial changes or insubstantial changes. Um, if the board finds them to be insubstantial changes, we would vote that tonight. And those changes would then be approved from that point forward without the need to issue a new decision or revise the old decision or do anything further other than just vote that they were insubstantial. Uh, if the board, however, finds them to be substantial, that does not necessarily mean that they're disapproved. It just means that they require a higher level of, of review to occur during a public hearing. So if the board finds any of the three proposed changes to be substantial, then we will notify the applicant of that finding, even though they're sitting here tonight. Um, and then the board will notice a public hearing to consider those further. So it's possible that they might be approved later on down the road, um, but you wouldn't do that tonight. You would, you would kick that down the road for um, later discussion during a public hearing. Um, as you mentioned, you've done, the board has done this for this project before, um, and I can provide guidance as we go through as to what, um, a substantial, what constitutes a substantial change and what constitutes an insubstantial change as a matter of law. The state regulations provide several examples of both categories. Um, and just to run through them very quickly, um, things that are necessarily considered a substantial change are an increase of more than 10% in the height of a building, an increase of more than 10% in the number of housing units proposed, uh, a reduction in the si size of the site by more than 10%, or a change in building type <coughs> and a change in form of ownership, which would be from ownership to rental or from rental to ownership. Um, things that are by definition not substantial are a reduction in the number of housing units, a decrease um, of less than 10% in the floor area of individual units, and a change in the number of bedrooms um, if those changes do not, um, um, actually that, that one's not applicable here, um, a change in the color or style of materials used. Those are the kinds of things that are considered insubstantial. Um, unfortunately, another, uh, none of those examples guide provide any real helpful guidance in terms of what's being proposed tonight. Um, so they provide those examples, but they don't provide any real guidance here, um, which means that the board's analysis falls back to a question of whether what they're proposing has an impact on the residents of the project or an impact on the residents of the surrounding neighborhood. It's really a question of whether what they're proposing has an impact that is uh, greater than what you originally approved or different in some way. So I think that's that's what the board, I would suggest, we should focus on tonight. Okay, thank you. Mark, do you have any comments you want to make at this I point? I have nothing to add, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we get started, I ask the, uh, the developer to get up and present his case. Uh, I think I would like to uh, ask, indicate that any testimony, give, testimony given to this board this evening uh, is taken under oath. So if anyone plans to speak tonight, including in the public portion. I appreciate it if you stand up now and raise your right hand. Like pertaining to any of the any. Okay. Don't you think you're going to talk, okay? I swear that the testimony given to me, by me, before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. I, I do. do. I do. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm yep. going to turn it over to you to- Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. So as you, as you mentioned, we were here before you in January last year about um, one uh, request for a change, which was setbacks, and we actually had um, specific waiver requests in the decision on numbers of setbacks, and we requested that those be changed. Um, so first I'll run through um, the two requested change and then deal with those, and then we could talk about kind of what would be a new type of request, which is the signage. So uh, I don't know if anyone's driven by or been by the building, 
but uh, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of how it came out. Um, it's always a challenge to get there, but I think it's a huge benefit uh, financially to the town and the viability of downtown, and I welcome anyone that wants a tour of it to come by. Um, you know, there's always things we've learned along the way. We've had complaints, always an issue. I think we've been open and receptive to hear those, have passed along our personal contacts to people. Um, so um, we want to continue trying to, to, to do that even today. So as part of the occupancy process, um, the building commissioner brought to attention two changes that he saw or that were, were brought about. Um, uh, one had to do with landscaping and the other with lighting. Uh, I'll start, um, well, landscaping, um, the reason we were before you in January was on the western side of the building. During the building code review process, we had to add an egress path. When we originally presented, we, um, the egress path went through the garage, mm -hmm. and the, our code, code read, the code reviewer determined that, that their interpretation was that didn't meet the code for a safety egress path, and that we had to run it from an exterior stair outside the building to the street. So when we did that, the building actually shifted. We came before you. We got that as ruled as an insubstantial change. But part, the second part of that, which we should have done then, was that there was a landscape strip along that path um, that we, uh, we obviously couldn't put in because the path was there. Um, so when it was brought to our attention, we had the landscape architect go out, uh, do an as-built plan. But a couple of the comments we heard from uh, specifically three neighbors was because the front of the building is a you know, closed garage and it's open on the side, that um, if there was something we could do to kind of screen that garage more, that that would be appreciated. So what we added to the as-built plan was another eight-foot section of fence along the front up between the building and the path, and we added some additional landscaping to the front. Uh, one of the neighbors who uh, has been here the whole time, I've conveyed with, and she appreciated, she thought that was an improvement um, for screening. And I guess um, seeing some of the emails come through, I don't know if I'm getting the name right, but there's and one of the plants showed a Japanese stuwacha plant, a tree there. And um, if that, we're more than happy to put that in. It, you know, it's a time of the year. If we could get it now, we'll commit, you know, we'll put it in writing, we'll put it in now. If we need a bond for one tree to put there, we'll do it in the spring. We're hoping we could actually get that now. Um, so if that was seemed like a point of contention among neighbors, we're happy to add that there. Um, but the landscaping really, you know, we've added there and we've changed the landscape plan. As you know, and we'll hear again, when we do the 40B, it's a very conceptual stage. Things are fluid. Um, even things on, like you'll see lighting and signage and all that, there's always changes. But um, in general, we've kept to the landscape plan. We've added some more in other spots. We've moved things around a little bit just on the final design of the building. But we submitted a as-built plan from the landscape architect as part of the package. So with the one caveat that uh, if the board is so inclined, we, we're happy to add that um, to back to the front there, um, neither now before final occupancy or some point in the future under some mechanism that I'm sure town council can advise to. So that's landscaping. Uh, I don't know if there's want me to go through them all if you have any questions, but I can certainly run through the other two real quick. Yeah, I think I'd have, at this point, run through them okay. all. And then I think we'll Perfect. get to discussing, we'll discuss yep. them one at a time. So the lighting, um, um, we submitted again a photometric plan, a light spec, um, and it, there was a garage plan showing lights. Um, that was done by a lighting company. When you do the construction drawings, an actual electrical engineer comes in, does a final plan, they tell you how they want it, what they recommend. They use standards. Um, we have in the decision um, that there's a lighting plan, and there's a caveat that says um, building egresses and stairwells, we could add additional lighting for safety and security. Um, our, we have a stamped letter from our electrical engineer that says they've designed the lighting for the ZBA requirements and, and other requirements, and that they designed it to adequately provide for safety and security. The original plan had like 16 lights. They were, they sat there. The new one has a lot more, but the um, original lights were like four times brighter lumens and wattage. And the elect th those just create like bright spots and then dark spots. So we went for a more uniform look. Um, we've heard some complaints from neighbors. We did a photometric plan. 
where we've heard the most complaints from on the side of the building. We're actually less candlelight there than what was on the plan approved by the ZBA way back then. Um, and also want to point, th these, we didn't just change it. They were part of the construction drawings. It's what we went through. I believe we actually conform to the decision because um, the engineer says that's what they've designed for adequately provide for safety and security. Um, it's in a garage. Those lights are also on, um, all, they shut off, that, you, that a few of them remain on and the rest of them shut off. They're on motion sensors at night. So at night they shut off and then obviously for safety and security purposes when someone's there, they come back on and then you know, they're on the motion sensor. So I think what we're finding out is that some neighbors see light there where there wasn't light before. There was a four story falling down building up on the property line and I think um, there's a difference between light spillage and seeing light. And in fact, if you go out there at night, the brightest light around there is the street light. Um, and I, it, I took a picture of it just to, sh to see, but um, we've gone out at night during the day trying to see if there really was some issue. We have the photometric plan. Um, we're you know, brighter in some spots in the garage, but on that western side where we've heard the complaints, um, we're actually less than on the shows on the photometric plan. I think on the approved plan, we were a little over two candlelights at the building edge there, and on the, uh, the, the final proposed plan, the, the final plan, we're like 1.3 candle, candle lights there. Not make, I'm not an expert in that, but it seems to me that it's not as, more, as much candlelight as what was on the approved plan. So I, I actually, uh, and I've talked to Mark, um, and we decide, and, and, and I concur with his, his thought that this was the best form to bring it because we did change the light spec, which I've attached, the location and number of lights. Um, but I also believe we actually do comply with it. But because we did change those, this is probably the proper form to discuss that change. Um, so those, both those were on the construction drawings. They've been there all along. I, I admit probably my mistake. I, it, should have got brought up earlier, decided earlier, and not at the end because we didn't just do it. But um, here we are today. So that's those two. Um, the signage, as we know, wasn't part of the comprehensive permit. We were only given guidance on what zoning regulation we had to follow, which is signage in a business B, if, if I remember correctly, um, which allows um, signage area based on linear feet of the building. Um, we had got a proof from CBDC CBDC lighting on the uh, canopies that we put up. I mean, like uh, signage on the canopies we put up that conformed. And um, there's like a little note caveat in the chart that says the lighting can't be above the, I mean, the signage can't be above the sill of the second floor window. Um, I don't think that um, was written to understand there may be a 40B in a four story building. And what we've proposed as a sign that's above, um, it's on the brick facade facing Lincoln Street, it's not lit. I think it's a very tasteful sign. It's less than what I believe we could even, um, a lot less than what we could put in there under the zoning, but it, um, it's above the second floor sill. Uh, so, I mean, if it was lower, it would conform to that, and because it's above. So because of that, you neither need, um, what we had talked about, it's, it's, you would need a, a variance, but going and talking, going through the 40B regulations, the proper form is actually, um, whether it's substantial or substantial, is, is putting, including it in the 40B um, uh, comprehensive permit application. So that's a new one, so I'm you know, you know, certainly happy to continue discussing that. The other two are changes that came about during the process that, um, so those are, and we requested um, a temporary sign up. There's a, a size limit. I don't think they took into account having a building like this uh, there. So we, we requested for a period of time a temporary sign that was larger than what would be under um, uh, regular uh, temporary sign guidelines. And I think I included a picture of what that would look like just so people could see. So figured we'd put them all in tonight to just try to avoid having to bore you co coming back again and taking up your time. So, even though we may be. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as I indicated before we started, I, I think maybe the best way to do this is to take the issues one at a time. Mm -hmm. So, take landscaping, take 
the plating right. and tape yep. sign. Okay, so I'd like to kick it off for this for the discussion with the landscaping piece. And I think I'll start over on this side with more. Okay. comments. First of all, do you have any comments? Not on this section, no. Okay. I definitely want to reserve my final thoughts to see if there's any public comment, but um, could you speak more to like what exactly changed? Do you have any pictures or diagrams of the landscaping changes? The, the main change was on the western side where we add, added the egress path. Okay. We couldn't plant there anymore. Um, so we planted, we added a, so the plan also had an eight foot fence around the whole property. And we actually planted um, a couple, a, a little, some more landscaping in front of that as shown on the plan. I forgot to mention too, we have all the neighbors behind us on Washington Street. We did a bunch of plantings there. We went and talked to everyone there. Everyone actually was pretty supportive and they you know, were impacted pretty directly there. And we had good conversations with them. So we planted there. We've actually fixed fences behind our property and other people's properties. Um, there was emails back and forth. So, um, and then we added some to the front where we thought it would be better to have maybe some landscaping than some hardscaping and just add some greenery. So, um, you know, those are the main changes. Um, I, I probably do have a picture of that front Fine. fence I section. Mean, I mean, it sounds like the applicant's pretty, pretty responsible and responsive to the community and it's done a lot of due diligence. So, I don't have anything else to really say about the landscaping. Okay. Can I just ask? Quick, quick question, quick question. Yeah. Have you seen, the, do you all have in front of you, I, I meant to bring copies and I didn't, but I have one up on my computer if anybody wants to see it. The, a copy of the original. It's like a little copy. The, the, yeah. the original approved landscaping plan. If you, yeah. if, I can show it if you think anybody. Well, uh, question I have now, just so I get this right, the reason you could not put in the original landscaping on that west side, which is specifically where we're talking here, was because of a code issue. And I will look to Mark, and I, is, is this uh, through Mark that the code would not allow them to have a, a, an exit or an egress from the garage other than where they located it? On the west side, they they had to eliminate uh, landscaping there. I wouldn't say that the code says that you can't egress through a garage. It's mm -hmm. not desirable okay. because of the potential of a hazard in the garage. Um, the code talks about egresses and access to public ways. If they don't have, you're allowed to have uh, areas of refuge in say, uh, you know, an area away from the building, so many square feet per person, la, 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 la. In lieu of that, you have access to the public way, which on that side would be Prescott. Mm -hmm. um, so to have the landscape in there and to have the minimum four foot egress width of walkable surface, that's why the building supposedly was shifted and the access comes out from that west stairwell out to the public way that way. Whereas the east stairwell on the Lincoln side would go out the Lincoln side. So the code is specific about length of travel to the public way, location of travel to the public way. It just says mm -hmm. egress to a public way. If that confused you even more. <laughs> okay. It's, this is Ken, uh, Ken Chase, Reddingham Ken. The, the, just, just to clarify. Um, I, I don't disagree with anything you just said, but um, this is a controlled construction project, so the architect has to sign off and stamp the set of plans, and they required that for us to go forward. So I think it is a judgment call, and in their judgment, it, it had to go the way that we Who's, went. who's the, they? The, the architect. Architect. It was actually Code Red as the code architect consultant. Record. That we uh, we submitted a, their report as part of the building permit package. Mm -hmm. There, and a lot of that stuff is some of its interpretation, and they, even though we kind of pushed back, interpreted, they wouldn't sign off unless we had that um, egress pathway. And that was submitted as part of the building permit code review process. Um, I, out of that stairwell, that pathway is the most direct path to Prescott Street okay. from that exit. But again, you know, this right here, they wouldn't sign off. They being part of your team, right? They were right. your, your building consultant. Right, but but we, because it's con control of construction under state law, they, 
the architect of record right. has to stamp everything and throughout the whole process has to certify that it meets code and then all that stuff. And even if we tell them we don't want to do it, they're going to say we can't sign off on it. And so we're, they're kind of in charge of making sure the building and is to code. Yeah. And the, the reason I, I you know, not, not, if I'm not mistaken, again, this is back in January, almost a year ago now, you were here for the change in regards to a shift in the building. And I thought at that particular time, the reason we were giving was that the surveyor had made an error in locating the building. And it had nothing to do, and at that particular time, you, you, you hadn't even thought about, I don't think, pouring sidewalks, egresses, landscaping, or anything else. The whole reason the building shifted was a whole different reason. It had nothing to do with the egress. Uh, and, and, there were two changes in the setbacks. The first was that uh, the surveyors had closed the property differently, so the angles right. were different. So the setbacks would have been different whether or not we had shifted the building or not. The second issue was the building shifted so that the egress pathway could fit. The end of the parking space is on that westerly side, and the curb ends at the, at the front on the Prescott Street side. Right at the property line is the, the four-foot mark that we needed for egress. Mm -hmm. So at that point, there's literally no room for anything other than that egress pathway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you worked with the abutter on that western property line, your western property line, their eastern property line? We, uh, well, that's not that abutter. It's abutters across the street. So we've had three abutters across the street talk to us about that okay. um, spot. Um, uh, and one of, one of them, uh, Jean Thomas, this who can't be here tonight, um, we've gone back and forth. She asked if we could add the fence. I thought that was a good idea in lieu of the landscaping, so we put an eight-foot fence to match. We added some landscaping. She appreciated that and actually today sent a note um, just asking about that the Japanese suwacha, if, if we could actually keep that and, and keep that in. And I told her I appreciated the comment and, and I, I agree that we will add that back in. Um, we have a couple other butters further down the street um, that, uh, you know, they, you know, uh, I don't think there's any pleasing them. So um, they, we were we requested things that you know, we, um, you know, plenty. You know, it, 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 they're four or five houses away. So, um, uh, but they know, also asked for that same tree. They asked for that same tree. Was yeah. on the Seems like it's a tree that people um, want to make sure we we include, and we'll we agree that we will put that in. That's fine. Answer my question. Have you had contact with the direct abutter to that your western property line there? We've we've reached out to that to that uh, abutter several times. It's it, the building is leased. Um, oh. the, the owner does not live there. Oh, okay. Um, we actually, when we put the fence in, the drive that driveway was in disrepair. As was the there was a piece of pavement that was somehow a part of the Doucet, uh property. I can't tell you exactly how that was used. I think that was a uh, an alley on the back of the building. So those two were kind of melded together. They were both in disrepair. So we actually um, ripped up their driveway and put in a brand new driveway for them in addition to the fence that we put in. So um, we reached out, we told the tenants we were doing that, asked to talk to the owner. We haven't actually spoken to the owner, um, but we've made numerous you, attempts. You, you repaired that driveway? We replaced it. Repaved it. Without speaking to the owner, we talked to the uh, to the tenants, tenants yeah. that were there. Said that we felt that it, we were just going to make more of a mess of it, trying to trying to fix that edge, than just repa just replacing it. And we wanted to talk to the owner and couldn't get a hold of him. I can't I can't believe you did that. You did not have something in writing from the owner that you went on his property and worked on his property. The owner whether it is her or whatever, but it obviously it's not owner occupied from what you say that property. No, it's not. It's tenants, he rents it out. Mm -hmm. You did not actually contact the owner of record and get a 
contract or, or an okay or an agreement to do this? So if I can jump in with um, Matt Roman um, with the owners group. Um, we did reach out. We left um, part of this whole process, not, not uh, specific to this neighbors. We, I personally went and spoke to all the abutters about, you know, when the fence around the perimeter went in, is there anything we can do to, you know, any more additional screening or landscaping that needed to be done? And, and we worked with a lot of neighbors closely. We did a lot of additional plantings um, and some landscape improvements for some of the abutters. Um, <clears throat> I actually was never able to get in touch with this owner directly, but through the tenant who's been there long, um, long term, and I think there might be some relation. Um, they were sort of a liaison, and they said, you're okay to come in and replace the driveway. Did we get written permission? But they said they spoke to the owner, and the owner gave us permission. So we didn't actually get anything in writing, but we got, you know, they spoke to the mm -hmm. owner and said, yes, you can come in and give us a, you know, give us a new driveway. We're okay with that, so. Yeah. That was a nice thing. You know, I'm not an attorney. I think we might have attorneys on the board who aren't here. We have our <laughs> town council who is an attorney here, and I can't believe that you went on somebody's property without an agreement from the owner of that property. I don't right. care if it was a right. tenant there or what. It's, you know, I could be renting a place and give some, yeah, sure, come on in here. I don't care what you do. I'm the only renting here. I'm, I'm going to be gone in six months or something. I don't care what you do. Well, they did speak to, you know, they did speak to the owner. You spoke to him via the, phone? The, the, or? Tenant, the tenant spoke to the owner. Okay, that's fine. I don't know if that would carry too much uh, weight in a, uh, that, in a court. Uh, or what, what, no, no. It's, the driveway was, you know, I get what you're saying. I'm an attorney. Okay. And, and we, I said, we, you know, and they were out paving, and we made, it was a disaster of a driveway, and sometimes no good deed goes unpunished. So, uh, you know, if that's our... What we're guilty of, then, then I'll, I'll, you know, that we paved someone's driveway that was literally a disaster, a disaster of a driveway. Then I'll, I'll take the blame for that. I thought it was a nice thing that we did. So it was. Yeah, it, it was fine. And yeah. if the owner agreed us, to it, you know, it would have been fine. And, and and we probably could have done not done it, and they would never have asked us to do it. It was just yeah. one of those at the call when they're out there, and we can't get in touch with them, and they say, "What do you want us to do?" as opposed to not doing it and then them coming and saying, my driveway is a mess now because they did it. It was a judgment call and, and like, again, if that's, if that's our fault, then that, that one I could, I, could, I could sleep at night knowing that I did. Yeah. It, it, it still is unbelievable to me that you, you would go ahead and go onto somebody's property without the owners agreeing to this. And a verbal agreement over, oh, we talked to them and they said, yeah, or the tenant said it was okay. It's, boy, I, it, it, to me, it's a good way to get yourself into legal trouble. Beside the point, you have a house. I, I'm looking, I would think you've changed the landscaping. You've changed what is supposed to be there on your west boundary line with the abutter, which would be his east no, you haven't changed. No, no, well, they would. That there's an eight foot fence between the two properties. There's not. It's not. It's a all the way down. So any landscaping was really only aesthetic from our property. Yeah. At the screening provided to that uh, neighbor was the actual. Then the fence would, itself. An eight foot fence, and then if you go out there and see, mm -hmm. six, eight foot really is a lot taller than a six foot fence, and that's what the board requested we do, and that's mm -hmm. what we put around the whole perimeter of the property. Um, and worked with neighbors on Washington Street, and that's also what we put at the request of the neighbors mm -hmm. on the front corner of the building, um, just as an, an additional thing that wasn't on the original plan. So um, that that's the screening, and that pro the eight foot size of that provides a, a significant amount of screening. Okay, I, you know, it's, I don't have the plan. Chris says, there was a, a fence there originally, Chris. So what, six foot. Oh, and I'll bring it over and I'll show it to you. But what the original, the landscaping plan that the board approved yeah. when it originally uh, voted the comprehensive permit included a substantial row of landscaping um, along that entire property, line, right, from the street all the way to the back, and then an eight foot high stockade fence. So it the 
the fence was there to provide some buffering between the two properties. Uh, I think it's certainly debatable whether the um, all of that landscaping provided additional buffering beyond right. the fence. I, I don't know. I think I disagree with okay. with with Matt that it didn't so, provide any because what you have on so it goes if you if you're going from the neighbor's property over to the development site, you've got an eight foot high stockade fence. Then on, on the approved plan, you had a substantial row of landscaping. Yeah. And then you've got parking spaces pointed directly at the neighbor. Right. Um, so. Okay. No. It, 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 you, from, from, from what Mark said and from what you say, now it clarifies it a bit there. Basically, what's on me, the, the eight foot fence was th to be there originally. And what's been eliminated is the landscaping in front of that eight foot fence. Right. On our side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eight. Eight, uh, eight foot high vinyl stockade fence, yeah. And that's what's still there now. Correct. But because of the putting in the walkway, they've had to eliminate that landscaping, that landscaping which correct. wouldn't have been seen by the abutter now. I mean, it, like, it, it there, are set, there are parts of those that the very tip of, Maybe, it, yeah. of it would have been seen by the abutter. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's different they, sizes. When the shrubbery and was full grown, may have seen a couple in a couple years, yeah. but it's, it wasn't a wide spot, so it wasn't going to grow yeah. too tall either. Yeah, it may, yeah. you know, the majority of that buffering would have been from okay. our property to the okay. fence. Yeah. Uh, without the fence there, that would have been a huge landscape loss. And and no, um, I, 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 yeah, no, no. This this whole discussion now it clarifies it that there was an eight foot fence there in the original comprehensive permit. It's still there. What's missing is some landscaping on the, what would it be, the easterly side of that fence. That's correct. Right. Yeah, on that, side. which is on your property. Right, right. And in lieu of that landscaping, what's been put in is, because of code issues, an egress to Prescott Street. And, and what we've added to um, on top of that is an eight foot fence from the building corner yeah. in the front to that pathway and added some landscaping in front of that pathway. The discussion after we added that was, geez, on the approved plan, there's that Japanese Suarcha there. We really like that. Can you put that in? And we didn't, and we will put that in because it seems like that's something that everybody wants to make sure is included there. Can I ask a question about that? Okay. That's a part that I don't understand, because if there was room to put it in, and it was on the approved landscaping plan, it should have gone in. Like, as I understand your request to for an amendment, you're asking to eliminate landscaping shown on the approved plan, because that space is currently occupied by a code-required co access path. Mm -hmm. But now we're talking about a tree that you... There's a tree there. They stupid. didn't like the tree we put in. Who did? The neighbors. They it was just a different type of tree. Okay. Different. So you put name. in the tree that was shown on the. We put on it. No, we put in a tree that it ha has a different name, and I. It's the same to me. Same so tree, but if I could just speak to that a little bit. So the, the landscape architect that we work with, you know, when we submitted this first landscape plan, there was no feedback that said, hey, let's maybe put this tree here and this here and this there. We kind of rely on the professional to say, hey, this is a cohesive landscape plan that will work. Um, one thing that always has to get sort of tweaked is availability. Um, you know, we have limited greenhouses. We work with Pavecchios and Sudbury. We work with Wagon Wheel and Lexington. But there's only, you know, there's going to sometimes be species that are shown in a plan that aren't readily available. Um, and a substitution's made. And, and we go back to the landscape architect. He says, yes, that's no problem. That will do well on this, in, you know, on this side of the building, on this side of the soil condition, or whatever, whatever it be. Um, and then we make those tweaks. So that's, you know. It, that, and that, and we put a tree there. It just done people somehow, because of what was available and what the architect suggested, and neither we would request that it be a different tree there, or because it seems like such an issue, we'll find that tree. If we can't find it now, We'll find it come next spring when things are more readily available than they were when we planted this. So, and take the tree that we put in out and put this one in. So, I guess I'm a little concerned that with the idea that the plan is being tweaked in ways that weren't brought to the boards or anyone on the. I, the, the were not in ways that were tweaked in ways that were not brought to the attention of the town. 
Um, the landscaping plan, to my mind, is not quite as conceptual as you guys are framing it to be. It was a plan that was presented to the board during the public hearing and approved by the board and captured in the comprehensive permit. So, it, you know, I'm comfortable having the board consider your request for an amendment where you can't put in landscaping at all because you need to put in a wax attack for, mm -hmm. the, for the for the um, to comply with the code. But the this the idea that the landscaping is actually different there on the ground than what is you showed on the plan that the board approved is is it, I it wasn't clear to it, that's a new concept. That's a new idea. Well, because we, we were we were asked to provide more landscaping in that section right there, and to do so, that tree is a bigger tree. To add some more, like we added some, I'll call them arborvitae, but they not may not be. When we're asked to do that, we kind of sit, looked at that as like, how can we plant that there? We were going because it seems like they, they really wanted that tree. Well, we may have to take out something else because we tried to add some more dent to the air at the request of the neighbors. So it wasn't like we were going to change that area, but once we put the fence in and there was some back and forth dialogue, um, and that, that's why we're here, so. Um. Okay. It, 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 no, I'll, I'll reserve any more discussions, I guess. Uh, it, it sounds to me like this, this landscape Plan presented tonight may not be the final plan. You may, you're still deciding trees. Well, we, we were requested. We may not be able to get this tree that we were requested to get, so we may have to put in another one. So that means you're going to be back again? No, we, we will get eventually that tree. What I suggested was, need, look, we could just say this is the final plan. The neighbors have requested something different. So trying to take the neighbor um, thought into consideration and not just say, this is the final plan, we will you know, commit to putting that in. If we could get it now, which I don't know if we will, we'll do it now. If not, there's ways under the decision which specifically says we could have final occupancy without landscaping there, or some, you know, we may have to bond over something to, to get that. So we're happy. I just thought it was something that, that the neighbors seem to request. We've heard it from a few neighbors, and I thought it was just another you know, it was a good way to kind of address that um, situation. So if the board thinks differently, we're happy leaving it as is. I just think that that's a, a good way to deal so with it. Trees. Doesn't sound final to me. Uh, yeah. 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 Then, uh, I'm done, You're the, I'm the done for here. now. I'm done for now. John? Um, I guess there's... Well, the first thing, Robert asked the questions that I would have had first. Um, why? Who made the decision um, that we had to put in the, the coded uh, um, walkway uh, from the building? Um, when you came back in January and asked for a modification, it was because somebody has cited the building properly, improperly. The board gave that to you, realizing that 40 Bs are conceptual plans, they're preliminary plans. You don't know until you actually get it in the ground what happens. Um, but in a project this size, you don't make mistakes. I think the board was very good in saying, "Hey, look at." Um, we understand that errors are made, but had this come up, the landscaping issue come up at the same time, I think the board would have taken that into account as it gave you somewhat relief by putting in that walkway or that corridor outside of the building. Um, so my big question in, in getting this straightened out was, is there something else that we have not seen or we missed along the line? And is this, it seems like it's, it's a little bit like the snowball on top of the, the hill in a snowball, 
in a snowstorm. <laughs> Once it starts going down, it gathers more <laughs> and more. Uh, and, and we seem to be going that way over the last what, year and a half. Uh, it, there's been problems with the project, and we're trying to get this straightened out. Is this the final absolute end to it? And my big question, too, is how do we, how do we mitigate that beside the fence? I mean, there's got to be something else that we can do. I, I have no idea what it is. Um, I'm not an architectural uh, landscape architect. Architect, I don't know what would be coming from um, the planning um, or building. I know building's not going to do anything, but I mean, working in together. What do we do to somewhat mitigate that? I, I just don't quite understand that nothing can be done. Period. Even if it's, even if it's in the form of. Um, alterations in the building itself. I don't know. I, I, I can't visualize in my mind. I just think that there is something else that needs to be addressed before we go any further. I know from reading all the emails and whatever and um, the temporary occupancy has been given. The final occupancy uh, has been um, held in abeyance until we get some of these things straightened out. Um, I don't know if that means you cannot put any more individuals into the into the uh, building itself. I know that you said that you already had residents living there. Um, I don't know what all that means, but I know that we're we're in a very complicated situation that we need to resolve somehow. Um, it's a little bit late to take the building down and move it back. Um, Mass housing is not going to look at that on the, with a positive vein. Um, we knew when it, all 40 Bs are conceptual to begin with, so you must be able to look at all sides. Any developer has got to look at all sides of the of the uh, project that's before them in rest requesting certain uh, changes and amendments to the bylaws so that we can get this this particular structure on the property. It just, um, I, don't know, I don't know what what can be said other than I would, I would, I would love to hear from somebody else, maybe um, another landscape architect, uh, somebody out there, maybe a building architect, I don't know what combination, but to see if there's something we can do um, to give us the egress walkway but still provide us some screening um, on the property beside the eight-foot fence. And what screening, I mean, just some, you know, the, the most of that, the vast majority, if not all of most of that, that screening is for our benefit to the fence. And when we put that fence at the front, um, you kind of, there's literally, only, you had to stand in one spot to be able to see it. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know. So, so the screening that we're, we talked about in the landscape, in the landscape portion of the 40B was for the uh, residents of the building. It was not for the neighbor or neighbors. Yep, that's right. That's the applicant's opinion. You may have your own opinion well, about what that landscape is for. Com I was coming back to ask you, because you sat there too. I, uh, I, I thought it was uh, to serve both purposes, but the one I was co concentrating on was more the neighbor or the neighborhood than it was the building residents. Because the building residents, if they don't like the location, they're not going to rent anyway. So, I mean, that, that's their option. I think that's why the decision mentioned that we'll work with neighbors to provide screening on their property um, as part of this process, which we've done. So um, you have you know, all the people behind on Washington Street that we um, could provide landscaping and requested it. We actually did do that. Um, they, you know, it's it, 
it's people that complain that have no benefit to the screening of that landscaping there that have complained. So the, the decision specifically asked us to talk to neighbors to provide additional screening um, on their property. And, and that was because we couldn't provide as much screening for them on ours, and the fence was there, and then if we could add some at our cost to, on their property. And, and, that, and it's specifically mentioned in the decision. And the property next to us on, um, on Prescott is, it's literally, it's always been paved. The two properties have been paved together. So um, I, I think we actually have added screening for the neighbors. Well, I, I, could, I could see that. But do you remember uh, plantings or screenage? I don't, maybe that just sailed right over my head. Um, but I don't remember that actually being in the, final decision. I'd have to go back and review the tape, but I do believe the board was concerned with this project and with any 40B project generally, where an applicant is building out to the extreme corners of the property lines and making the maximum possible use of their property in terms of a building in a way that's not allowed under your zoning bylaw. Uh, the board has an interest ensuring that there's some measure of open space at the property and some amount of landscaping that's going to make the pro you know, a property that's otherwise occupied by a much larger apartment building than is allowed under your zoning bylaw has also some outdoor amenities, including trees, plants, um, things like that. So I, I will not, I think the degree to which this particular portion of that landscaping you secured in your original decision is important and needs to be preserved is, is something that you all, the board members themselves, need to consider. Um, but it was, I think, certainly some amount of work went into this plan in the original public hearing, and I think it went into, you know, the applicant was made to produce this landscaping plan, um, in part based on pressure from the board to get additional landscaping, and probably from, uh, I assume that there were comments to that effect from your civil engineering peer reviewer said that there was you know, the need to, to provide a workable landscaping plan. Um, so I think it, it, was I, it was certainly important to the board at the time to some extent, um, but I, the, how important it is to preserve it now I think is up to you. Um, and, you, you ha and to the extent that it's important, you, you know, sort of have to factor in the argument which has some weight that they needed to add this access path. necessarily means that all that landscaping has to go away, but um, you know, they need to, there's an argument that they need to do that under building code. Um, I guess the idea that I'd throw out there too, though, is that if they can't provide the landscaping strip that they showed on the approved plan, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it just goes away and that's, that's the end of it. It would be reasonable, I think, for the board to say, if you can't provide that landscaping, how are you going to make up for it? on other parts of your property. Um, I think they've argued that they've done that by putting it at the front corner on the street, but again, that's something that you need to weigh. But it's not, I, I would expect, when presented with the argument that they can't provide some of the landscaping that they showed you originally and that you required them to provide, I would expect there to be some give and take in terms of fixing it in other ways, um, by adding additional landscaping, different landscaping, landscaping in other places, that's if it's acceptable to the board in the first place. That would be sort of the second question you might ask. Who is, uh, who is the uh, property owners or whatever on the westerly side? Uh, that is shown on the approved plan. I don't know if this is still true. As uh, um, Piero, P I E R R O, is the owner. Just, I believe just, it was sold at some point right after that. Um, but and I but and I don't. That that's another thing that's that's struck me in terms of the discussion tonight is that um, I understand that that property owner may have been very difficult, if not impossible, for the applicant to get in touch with. But much of what we're talking about here does concern impacts to that property um, in terms of exactly. the way the parking spaces are pointed um, and who that landscaping might have benefited most, even with the fence there. Um, so I think. 
board's in a tricky position of being asked to evaluate the impacts of the removal of this landscaping without having any direct information about how that property owner feels about it. And, they, and I mean, the, the, the people who have complained have been the same group of people the whole time. We haven't, I think the fact that people haven't complained means that, you know, if they had an issue with it, we, I'm sure you would have heard about it. I would ask the board to look at, I know we're here to talk about one specific area, but I would look at the landscaping tonight in its entirety and looking at, you know, really how nice it came out, how much landscaping there is, how much additional landscaping we did to the abutters. We weren't, we were generous with what we did. We did not try and, you know, we gave everybody what they wanted um, going all the way down, um, you know, with all the abutters. Um, and, and I guess I would ask yourself, like, this one strip that really affects our property more than anybody, you know, in the whole scheme of things. And the, really, it's pretty minimal what we're talking about. And um, I would look at, you know, the building, the landscape, the aesthetics, and sort of this is one final step we need to do to move this project to closure is to sort of get this board's blessing and be able to move on. And we'll continue to work. If there's a neighbor that wants a specific tree, we can deal with that sort of offline and we will give them our, our best effort to find that tree and put it in. But to hold this whole process up over you know, one tree or one minor thing doesn't seem like it's in the best interest of you know, really the town and closing this whole project out. So I would just uh, sort of ask that everyone to step back a little bit and look at the project in its entirety as far as the landscaping goes. So what you're doing is you're actually um, uh, buying Chris's uh, philosophy that it's not necessarily just for the board, not just just one section of it. We can look at that in entirety, which I certainly could could understand. Um, but at the same time, just because the neighboring property here, right now, we can't get a hold. Of, you can't get a hold of the owner. We don't, I mean, your building is not gonna move. We don't know what's gonna be in that, in that other neighbor's position later on um, in terms of renovating whatever. Um, it may or may not have an impact, but the aspects of zoning is that, you know, you don't develop any new, <laughs> any new lots, any new land. What you have is what you've gotten. It's not going to change. So what are we doing for that neighbor at the same time? I, I can understand that, maybe, but I don't understand why we can't get a hold of that. Just like Bob said, I, I was aghast at the same thing. Um, yeah, we've tried. I, I, I think they've been there. Yeah. Just don't, not interested. Don't, 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 yeah. No, yeah. Don't, yeah. We, we're not going to discuss it. Yeah. We just I didn't agree. get there. I, I agree. The question was, yeah. why, why can't we? And... Um, I mean, the town has has the records of who the owner, where the owner lives, whatever. We can track that down, or you can get your attorney to track that down, find out this individual, and have them come in and talk to the town, whether it's uh, Andrew, or whether it's Mark, or whether it's Gene. Um, somebody needs to to be able to protect the neighbor at the same time too, even though the neighbor right now doesn't necessarily understand, I'll, I'll use the word understand, what rights he or she has, yeah, or just, what, the, uh, what their estate has. I understood, but that, just so we're clear, that eight foot fence is, and, and I ask everyone to go look at the difference between a six foot and eight foot fence, is solid from the ground eight feet up, and the screening that provides, um, and I would, and, I, and get that, you know, is tremendous amount of that, that's why we put it there because that provided more screening than any landscape especially when it comes to things that there's it's a garage um, that is what provides the screening for them the greenery is is a nice thing to have um, especially for us from our point of view looking out but the the screening of, of the garage is provided by for the fence and that and that's what they were always going to see the majority of um, 
they're close to the property. So that's a solid eight foot high um, vinyl stockade fence there. So I, I you know, I, that, okay. you know I, I, I don't. I'll just say the combination perhaps of both aspects of it uh, would be worthwhile uh, to, to consider. Um, but I understand, you know, the project has got to come to completion. Uh, Mass housing as well as the town of Reading, it, it just can't keep dragging on like it's dragging on. So we need to, to do something about it. I don't know what that actually is right now, and I'll reserve my, my suggestions and comments for later on. But, and I'll just say, I'll move along. <laughs> All right, Hillary, comment? Um, so this new egress path, is this hardscape or is this, um, what is that material? It's, it's, it's paved, it's, it's paved, asphalt. Yeah. It's asphalt. So you're, you're removing this amount of trees and replacing it with a hardscape um, asphalt paving. So one of the, one thing that I know exists is a vertical um, planting that could be put be between the building and this um, this paving. So it's not just the, the the screening as you're talking about it, but it's also a you know landscape issue where we're asking for some greenery, and that's being removed. So I'm in agreement with Chris in that you know we are removing all of this um, material that produces carbon dioxide and we're replacing it with a hard impervious surface. So that's my complaint um, in the discussion that we are having today. Okay. I guess it's my turn. Can, uh, uh, my first comment, I guess, would be that I, I, it really bothers me that at this stage of this project, we are talking about deviating or changing from the approved comprehensive permit. If you look at the ground rules by what is substantial and insubstantial, you know, I, I think you almost have to conclude that this falls into the insubstantial category, but that doesn't mean it's not a problem. I think it's a big problem. Now, we're, we've been talking about the neighbor right next on the other side of that fence, but there are other neighbors, I believe, who have been in communication with you mm -hmm. in detail. Mm -hmm. All right? And I don't know if any of those, I know I was thinking of two ladies in particular, and yes. I don't know whether they're here tonight or not. Yes. But, okay? And I got the impression, and I, I saw an email this afternoon at 4.09 that said that you and one of them seem to be like we're almost there in terms of what would be acceptable to them. That that was that, that's that was, fine. No, no, that was Gene. That's fine. That was Gene. Oh, but, Gene. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and right. that's why I suggested tonight, based on that conversation, that we add that, make sure that that specific tree is, in, that is there. So. How many abutters have been complaining and trying to figure work with you to is it just those two? No, Jean Thomas. Three, right? uh, Jean Thomas has been there the whole time. She's been very respectful. She's had very good comments. We actually toured the building with her. She was part of the. We let her come when the planning department came and toured the building. We included her. She that was the email today. There's two other neighbors further down Prescott Street yes. that when we had the discussion on what we could do and we talked about fencing and trees, the suggestion was, well, you could just plant a tree that size on my property. And I said, you know, there are four houses away from us. Um, the landscaping along our fence was nothing they would ever see. And to um, Hillary's point, um, we actually added additional landscaping to the front of the building to make up for that, where people actually would see it more benefit to the town, and I think that was what Matt was trying to say, is that we actually, there's more landscaping, it's the same amount of landscaping we moved, we didn't just get rid of that landscaping, and I apologize if I didn't make that clear. We added landscaping to the actual part of the building people see more, and thought it would be nicer to have landscaping there instead of pavement or hardscaping there, um, and so that you still had the same amount of plants, but there's been two 
other than Gene, who we've had very respectful conversations with, there's been two neighbors, um, and one of their points um, has also been if we could add that tree, somehow that specific tree seems to be um, what the neighbors have requested, uh, other than what we the tree we put in, and I don't know the name of the tree we put in. Um, it's, but it's the one we've put we put in two trees that are more of what I would call like an evergreen type tree. And the tree that was originally on the plan that they're requesting we put in is a flowering tree. So that's no, yeah, so we, we, the only difference. I, I thought think. it would just be an easy, uh, uh, because that we've heard from three neighbors on this issue, and all three have asked us to put that tree in. Um, I just thought it'd be a good thing to just say, you know what, instead of trying to just say this is what it is, let's just put that specific tree in. Um, that, and I have emails from them requesting that. So, you also made a comment that there are some abutters that we're just never going to be able to police them or take care of them. Mm -hmm. Is this a reference to abutters that you have not been working? Are these no. other abutters, no. or are these the abutters these you've been the, talking no. to? These are the abutters. So you've come to the conclusion you're never going to please them. Well, when I was told that the building there before looked better than the building we put in now, and I have a picture if the board would like to see what was there before, um, then I know it's hard to, you know, I'm, I'm going up a, a hard tree to climb. Do you think that any of the concerns expressed by the abutters under the umbrella of landscaping have any relationship as well to lighting? Um, no. I don't want to get into the But I actually discussion. think that their, their comment about adding the screening and the fence there was a good suggestion and a good comment that was provides more screening um, at the front of the building than any landscaping would ever done. Mm -hmm. And I thought um, that was a actually productive, um, it was a, a valid concern. And I think um, uh, Ms. Thomas, who, who's appreciated that we added that, um, has been reasonable. And, and, and you know, I think that was a, you know, I do. I think the lighting is a whole another there's now lights. I thought, no, 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 I right, thought we were so. dealing with the easiest one to start with. No, I think the lighting actually, but that's, but that beside, but I, I, but the, but the, but we did add additional landscaping to, to the building. It's on the plan. And um, we, you know, I think the, the landscaping plan came out nice. We had the planning out there, that corner, you know. I, I think it, it's it, worth noting that there's six direct abutters. They're all very happy that every one of them said, you know, seeing the building complete, seeing how it came out, we're very happy. And those are people that are affected much more than the people that have an issue with certain features right now. So I think that's worth noting because I think that those are the people that the building affects the most and those people are all quite happy with the result of the building. And, and, so. and people that have been involved in the process the whole time and some that even were, you know, we, we had go, gone back and forth. I think when we've gone through at the end, they're all, Pleased with how it came out, they're happy. We asked landscaping. We've cleaned up their yards. We've fixed fencing. I mean, we've done a lot of things that nobody hears about because it's usually the people that want to yeah. complain is what we hear about. Um, but there's a lot of things we do that we don't sit there and ask for any pat on the back for. It's just the right thing to do. Adding some additional f landscaping on this corner and the fence we thought was a, the right thing to do, so we did it. And um, you know, I think we've just swap landscaping out there that mostly benefited us with landscaping in other places that I feel benefits more at the town, actually, so. Yeah. Well, one of the things I think we want to try to realize as an outcome here is that we have a final presentation on that side of the property that's not only acceptable, it's acceptable to be two parties, the tenants and the abutters, okay? And uh, I'm not sure that the tenants even care. Uh, enough to complain about it or talk about it, but we still need to find a way because we are doing something different. And I'm not sure how we're gonna get there. Uh, uh, as, as I said before, I think in, in common sense terms, this should be an insubstantial change. But, okay? I would say that we have to please, since it is a change, we have to make sure that the abutters are happy. Okay? And, I th and I'm I, not sure they're there yet. Well, and I, I don't think some of them will ever be there. Let's just well, be Well, that's what you say, but um, a few moments ago you said everything looked good. 
No, I, and I think that they all requested one of the things that was requested by the only three that seemed to have complained. You say one of the things. Um, on the, on the, I'm talking about the landscape. Yeah. Specifically, is adding that specific tree in. I think um, you were copied on the email from Ms. Ms. Thomas's. Yeah, tons of emails. And um, uh, no, it's specifically about the tree and requesting. You know, the fence looks good. I was looking at the plan. I would really like if you could add that. Make sure that that tree is there. But if you add that, that's, is everybody happy? And I have an email from, I could pull up another heard, one from I've another abutter. <laughs> so I just don't think there's ever pleasing. I, I, I believe the answer is yes. What, what Matt's getting at is um, there are abutters who don't like the fact that there's a building there that's different than what was there before. And being 100% objective about it, they just, that's how they feel. So when he's saying they're not going to be happy, that's why. Not that we haven't implemented the changes that they've requested, because I think the the two things we were asked to do by a Butters, which was Jean Thomas's, who has a view from Washington Place into that corner of the building. She was very specific about having a fence there. Uh, we put that in, she was very happy with that. The two of Butters down the street, um, their concerns were a fence and adding that tree back in, because that tree had, has the potential to grow uh, particularly tall and flowers. And those were the things that they had asked for. And I, I saw the emails, and my takeaway from that was that if we added that tree, that we would get them to a point where they would be satisfied. I, I, I don't okay. think happy would be a good description, but satisfied. No. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. Can I ask one question? Uh, this is to Andrew and to Matt. Um, do we have uh, a plan? Um, as, as was done here, but uh, more or less in color or whatever that demonstrates what the original set of criteria for landscaping issued by the board and what you have added in addition to uh, Kind of placate the people out there who have cons major concerns so that somebody could see well this is what you have done um, because you know as, as Chris has had made the point before maybe you can't do anything here but you can do something other on the property to um, replicate what you you missed here. Doing we don't. We don't. We don't seem to have anything that shows. I mean, to me, I, I can't tell from two years ago um, what almost two years ago what um, was initially put on the landscaping and the board approved of in the original uh, decision, and what you have added to and changed in the meantime, so that whether it's the board or whether it's other people out there in the community that's saying, geez, well, did, what did you do? I mean, what can you do? Or, um, as Hillary brought up, maybe you can look at uh, something that's a softscape rather than a hardscape um, down there. I mean, I, do we have anything like that? Well, I, and I think I was just gonna follow up on that point. I, what you have, I think, and, and Andrew and Matt can correct me if there's more in the record that I'm not aware of, but what you have, I think, is the original plan that you approved and the as-built plan that the applicant submitted on November 12th um, with the letter for the, asking for this amendment. So you've got those two plans, and comparing them by eye is really what you have to go by in terms of mm. what we're talking about here. I just want to add one thing that's only really occurred to me as we've been sitting here tonight and hearing the applicant talk about it, which is that uh, the, the request, as I understood it, focused really on the elimination of the landscaping along the western property line to accommodate the access road. Right. But as I look at the approved plan, um, the planting schedule rather on the approved plan and the planting schedule on the as-built plan, there's, there are differences that I hadn't appreciated before. Um, and they've talked about how they've adjusted things as they've been installing the landscaping. Um, it's possible that what they've done is, is, is better than what you originally approved. It's certainly different. Uh, it's also possible that it's not as good. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm, 
concerned, the longer this discussion goes on, the more concerned I'm becoming that what you're being asked to approve tonight is not just the elimination of that one strip of landscaping, but rather a wholesale change of the landscaping that you looked at two years ago um, in ways that haven't been really adequately, I don't think, explained or called out. So John, your question was, what do we have to sort of compare two years ago to now? And he, he, I'm concerned that there may be differences that, that, that I don't understand, and I suspect the board members individually don't understand. Well, it sounds it, like, I heard you right, that there have been some landscaping changes made elsewhere as well. I think that's okay. true. Who and said that? If I could just, I mean, huh? there's, oh. <laughs> there's certainly little tweaks here and there. Little tweaks. As there are a little people. tweak is a change. Understa right. Understand Sorry. that, but if we look at, if we're here to debate every little change in the building, let's talk about the facade, let's talk about this, let's talk about that. We could go on and on. That's just part of a project. There's little, you know, there's little tweaks throughout it. So, I mean, we're talking about, is this even really debatable, or is this, you said to yourself, this isn't a substantial change, so I'm not quite sure why we even need to have this debate and this conversation, but we're trying to be reasonable here, and we're trying to make all the neighbors happy, and I think, again, again, pull ourselves back, look at the whole project, look at all the abutters that are happy, that are directly affected, look at the landscape that we've done as a whole, and we've certainly... Uh, there's every bit of required landscaping, if not more than what that was. That may well be, yeah. but the issue at the point we're talking about tonight is a specific change. All right, so I guess there's it. Not going to be, I, I, I don't, don't mean, care how good we made the rest of it. We're talking about a specific situation. Well, we're just saying a, a holistic landscape has the, from four years ago when we submitted that plan at the end of the whole process to now, is there a substantial change in that plan? We've highlighted where there's an actual, we've taken stuff out, so it's pointed, but we've added that in a lot of places we haven't pointed out either. So is there a change? Of course, there's a, and, and just like the plans say, we have to do plans substantially in conformance. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, I think if we had, didn't have three neighbors that want to complain about every little thing we do, it wouldn't have even been an issue, um, but because we get the game of gotcha with people. Well, that tree was supposed to be this type of tree, and you put in this tree, which I don't care if it's nicer or not, then you didn't conform to the decision, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to hold you up. So what we've done is try to add as much landscaping as we can. We understand we had to move some there. It wasn't like we're like, great, we, we, we chose not to. You know, they, that path came up two years ago when we were doing code review. Um, and then when it's in, now we're trying to see, hey, now that it's in, where can we add some landscaping? Can we add a fence so that it is not a substantial change um, and that it is, provides, addresses specific concerns from specific people? And we've met with them in person. We've responded. I mean, there's, there's, there's only so much it, you could really do. And, and, you know, as opposed to just hearing time after time, well, that was really supposed to be, you know, a Japanese maple, but you put in a different type of maple, and now I'm going to go and complain and, and tell them that you didn't do exactly toward the plan. So if there's things, we've always had an open door. If there's like, say, if a neighbor has a concern, like even to two hours before this meeting, someone just said, can you just put that tree in? Sure, we will just put that specific tree in. If we can't get it now, we will put a bond up to put in that one tree that we're supposed to put in. So, you know, I, there's, there's only so much we could do. The building came out great. It's substantially exactly what we've had. It's been reviewed. It's been gone through by the building department, the fire department, the planning department. We have a few neighbors, and rightfully, and they're right to do so, that want to complain about every minutia of detail that's there. And I could run down the list of things. Specifically to landscaping, we were asked by those people, provide better screening at the front, a fence would maybe help, and some additional landscaping, which we've done. It wasn't good enough. So I, I just, I mean, I don't think we're created any change that's substantial in nature. It's just we have to continue to work with neighbors to try to appease them. Um, and I don't know if I, we can. I would like, we've got to move this thing. We've got an hour and a half on the, on the easiest part oh, of this I, discussion. Oh, I can see this going on for a long time. It's got us. Yeah, so I'm going to, I don't know if I can open up the public comment. I don't on each one of the issues. Do we do this in other business? 
Huh? Other business? Can we do that in other business? Public comment section? Yes, Chris. It is right. not a public hearing. This is just a meeting. Right. Okay. How, however, uh, and I'll defer to the board on this, but one of the things that we're concerned with here is the impacts of the proposed changes on the area. So if right. anybody's here and wants to speak to it, I think that would be valuable for the board's review. I, the only caveat I would add to that is that it is important, I think, for everyone to confine their discussion to the requested changes. There may be any number of right. other um, concerns about the project, but as, if they're not within the scope of the three things that the applicant has applied for, I think they're properly raised in another another. I think I would do that. Uh, is there anybody here in the public who would be commenting on this particular discussion of landscaping? Anybody? Then I'm not going to open it. Okay, well, you opened it and you closed it. Yeah, no. You just opened you it. You just opened it. Closed it. Yes. No comments from the public. I would, we'll close I, it. I would like to see the final changes have been made, highlighted, so that the board, as well as anybody out there, there's probably many people out there who, who did not attend tonight, but who's concerned about it. Um, if you have something that you can show that you have done during the during this process, it helps the board out to say, hey, look at this, there's justification yeah, for the board to make this insubstantial because it's it's taken from one place and put into another area, but we've created something a little bit better. I don't think that, well, as one member of the board, Hillary may be different, but as one member of the board, um, I wouldn't know one tree for another tree, I, but I, 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 I would like to know if there is a substantial difference and you'd have to go back to a landscape architect to do that. So, but, but the point would be, you're doing two things. You're doing it for the board so that they can see what has been done, but you're also doing it for the community and anybody else out there who can come in later on and take pot shots at both the board and the... And I, the I, can, can, can I add to that? I think that's a, a very good point in, in, for the following reason, it, that there are differences to the landscaping plan. The, the, the as-built plan is very different than the original right. landscaping plan that you approved two years ago. Um, the applicant has made the case that it is better than it used to be and is better than what you originally approved. Um, I haven't been out on site in daylight, so I you know, have no anecdotal way to evaluate that claim. Um, and I'm not a landscape architect, so I, I can't look at the two plans held up next to each other and, and decide which one is better than the other. Uh, I, I assume that's true of the other board members, although maybe you've seen it and seen what they've done out there. But I think if they haven't persuaded the board that the changes are acceptable, then the board needs more information. And it's possible that they can make that case differently or better if they had new plans to present to you or a landscape architect here to explain the changes that were made. <laughs> and why the you know removal of the um, strip that is the main focus of this is is okay. Um, so I think it, there is a uh, perfectly appropriate desire for more information from John and maybe from others on the board. So you can make that request of the applicant. The difficulty is that the board is under deadline to decide this substantial, insubstantial question tonight um, because you only get 20 days from to make that determination. So if there's a desire for more information and the applicant's willing to provide it, then we need to figure out how we get that, how we keep, retain the board's ability to make that determination. One, one possibility would be an extension from the applicant. Another possibility would be to find that these changes are substantial so that we're back in a month talking about this in a public hearing. Here we go. Um, where they could present all the additional information they wanted if they didn't take an appeal directly to the Housing Appeals Committee, which they could do. Could do. Um, so that, those are some <laughs> complicating uh, factors, but I th but it, I think the main point there is that um, it is difficult for non-landscape architects to evaluate the differences between these two plans, and it may be useful, in my opinion, and it sounds like John's opinion, for the applicant to uh, provide more information on that front. Can I just make a quick point? The, the planning department was out 
and walk the entire site with us. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the area that was identified as different was this westerly boundary. Um, and we were re requested to add one tree along the Prescott Street side. Am I mischaracterizing? I don't believe so, but we did not have the as-built plan at that time, so we could right. like, side by side. But the, the proposed plan was there. So but the, just by definition, the fact that the only changes that they were able to detect were in that one area, then the changes aren't substantial, other than it, the only thing that, that they could identify even as a change is that one area, which we called to your attention. And we're here tonight to talk about. The, the issues that were raised as a result of that change came from three abutters who are not here tonight, who communicated over email with you, I believe, Mr. Chairman, and with us, who specifically addressed the specific concerns they raised, other than the one concern, which was put the do set moving and storage building back. That one we said no to. But other than that, we've been responsive to what abutters have asked for. All the abutters on the Washington Street side, we've done exactly what they asked for, and they're happy. And, and you would have heard if they weren't happy. And I guess stepping back under 40B law of determining substantial versus insubstantial, and some of the guidelines which would be considered substantial of adding 10% of the units, 10% of the height. If a tree on the Lincoln Street side changed from this to this, uh, you know, uh, we haven't had, we've heard complaints from three people, um, uh, and I'm just not sure, you know, we added landscaping and it's a change, but I just don't see, uh, you know, how um, we've, you know, and, and that, uh, maybe, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm misinterpreting wrong, but I, I just don't, you know, the landscape plan, um, you know, it, nothing's going to change, you know, it's, it's the landscape plan. You're asking us to make a decision. Yep. We do not have the facts in front of us. You removed all the landscaping along that western boundary. What's the square foot area of that? Can you tell me? Uh, you don't know. I don't know. We can go by a plan, and do, it was substantially wide there. Now it's replaced with a, a bituminous walkway. Now, have you replaced that any other area around here? Have you added that, yeah. say, uh, 200 square feet, We've 300 added, square feet of the, landscaping it's, anywhere it's else? Not a square foot is to calculate landscaping. It's how much landscaping. Yes, we have. Well, then you should put this down on paper so on we can plan. see it. It's on this the is plan what was proposed. This is what we have now. This That's is what, what we have. proposed to do, plan. Yeah. to do this. We there's have a it, proposed though. plan yeah. and there's an as plan. Your attitude is to come here before this board after the fact and ask for a forgiveness rather than come and ask for permission. That's the attitude that I get. It's not. It's, it's a frustration that we presented an as-built plan of what's actually there, not what we're proposing, what's actually there. And you could look side by side. Which you put in and, that did and, not agree with the original plan. And you so could, you were coming here now, after it's planted, asking for forgiveness. This, this, That's what you're doing. The move for this walkway was already approved a year ago. So the, the permission for that was granted in January. By who? By this board. This board approved that walkway last year. The, there was a, a building move. There was a plan shown with a walkway that. along that westerly boundary. That was approved by this board. And so did the, every department when we got building permits. Every department reviewed it, and it was on that plan. What resulted in that, and I, I get it, is there, the landscaping plan had to change because of that. And the mistake, and I, I apologize, is way back when, that plan said, hey, oh, we we moved that egress. We, you know, it's obviously come about at the end, but we've added the same, you know, the, the landscaping plan side by side is the judge. If you think that that landscape plan is substantially a change than the other one, that's your right, you know, I get it. That, that's your right to do it. It's just a frustration that we've been with a number of neighbors that their point is for you to come and, and this is what their point is for it to happen. And how do you think this board feels? I, frustrated with you coming here before I, us, I asking agree. for forgiveness. All the, all, you, you, you construct something before you before we give an approval, and then you come to us and say, oh, this is an insubstantial change. Approve it, please. After it's built. I, I, agree, on the land, I agree on the landscaping, that it should have been brought beforehand. Um, and, you know, I, I apologize, but it's... Um, 
We've, we've heard specific complaints about it, stepping back, and we've tried to address those specifically to people. So, Chairman, I have, I have one question that I want to give to Chris. I, for one, member of the board, I do not want to get into this push and shove with mass housing. Nobody wins. Um, we need to resolve it. We have two other issues to resolve tonight. My question to Chris is how can we get through this? I mean, this is just the landscaping aspect of it. We don't have even Ooh. talked about the other two issues. How can we get through this? Because it's, we got two other cases before us this evening too. I'll, how do we do that, Chris? I'll offer a bit of a shortcut okay. um, in terms of the remaining two issues to be discussed. The lighting, the first two requests sort of fall into the same category as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Lighting and landscaping in so far as the applicant did something out there on the ground that is different than what they showed to you originally and that you approved originally. So they're coming in to ask your permission for that change, the difference to, for you to approve the difference between original approval and what's out there right now. We're going to consider those under the substantial and substantial um, analysis. The signage question is a little bit different in so far as the applicant in the original hearing didn't show you signage. There was no discussion of it, and in your decision what you did was say, that's fine, you didn't show us signage, so we're not approving any. Um, now they want you to approve some signage. I think because they didn't show you any, and you included a condition that you were not approving any at all, and now they're raising the issue really for the first time um, in this new forum, I think it's that's one where I'm more comfortable finding that to be a substantial change just because it's sort of an all or nothing analysis. There was nothing discussed the first time around. And because there was nothing discussed the first time around, that is I think more properly covered in under a public hearing um, where you could deal with it. Um, and they can make a presentation, you can deal with it in a more extensive, uh, to a more extensive degree than you're doing here. I still think it's something that the board can grant as an amendment to the co original comprehensive permit, but I think that's one where we can talk about it uh, when we get to that third item. But it's if 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 there's an appetite to treat that as a uh, the, the proposed signage as a significant change, that's I think it, it's fair enough that the board consider that in a public hearing. And that wouldn't hold up the rest of the. They don't need a. The sign, as, the, as, the as I understand, the sign is not going to. They can they can obtain a certificate of occupancy, exactly without signage, and then the building can be fully occupied, and they can add, come back to add signage. You know, two well, weeks we from could, now, a we, month from now, a year from now. Well, we and could the building, ask them to come back and do it in a much what's what's time period. right. I think what they their most pressing concern, I, I believe, is the, the need two. for a final certificate of occupancy. Yeah. To obtain that final certificate of occupancy, they need to show the building department that they satisfy literally each and every one of the conditions in the decision. That they currently do not because there's a variance between the landscaping that they need to provide and the landscaping that they can provide. Um, but again, the signage I think we can treat as a sort of a different category. And just as a, I'm going to throw it out there. Um, the person that you have to placate is this board. This board is making the decisions on 40 B. You have to you have to let us know what we're what we're doing and what we're working with. That's why I think coming forward at this point, you want to get through it. I certainly, as one board member, want to get through it. I want to resolve the occupancy issue, uh, but I I think we need more clarity so that we can move forward with that too and find the insubstantial ability, insubstantial changes were made, period, so we can move forward. And I, I totally agree with, with, with Chris. Um, the signage uh, we can get into, that's, that's not going to deter you from getting the occupancy permit. It's not going to deter you from getting residents to occupy the building either so that's 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 where I'm coming from but we need we got two more cases and we got 
what we released. But I think I've come, what, I, what I'm hearing is that when you when you go back to the landscaping, we're, we're, I think we're all in agreement that we need more information. And we haven't even talked about the lighting yet. But I guarantee you, predicting in advance, we're going to get into the same kind of discussion of what was and what is. We need some clarity on that, okay? I think we're going to have some, but we want to get into a discussion of that at this point? Or uh, since, we're, since we're obviously going to call but landscaping a substantial change for the moment, probably, no, I believe I'm not we so should. sure that you want to do that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, can I say something about yes. both the landscaping? I mean, I, don't, I understand it's not a perfect process, but I don't want perfection to be the enemy of good. I think when we previously moved the building footprint, although we didn't realize at the time, it was pretty much implied there was going to be some type of landscaping changing because we're losing a lot of you know places to plant. But I think the applicant has made a good faith effort to mitigate a lot of the impacts. I don't think they're purposely being malicious. I don't think they wanted the building footprint to move or to lose that landscaping. I don't see any abutters here talking about landscaping. And I haven't heard of any outstanding issues from daytime government. There may be some, but I haven't heard any about changes to the landscaping. And I hear about what our council says, about what constitutes substantial, and I don't see the big substantive changes, the housing tenure change, the height, size of units. I see we're losing some landscaping. But I also, to the applicant's point, I can appreciate a lot of that landscaping is primarily to the benefit of their residents. And it's behind an eight foot really tall fence. So although I'm not incredibly happy about the landscaping, the fact that we weren't made aware of the changes and the fact that there may be other changes in the landscaping plan if we did a side-by-side -side analysis, I as one board member would feel pretty comfortable not having that be a substantial change. The lighting, I don't know yet. The signage, I think as far as neighborhood impact, that's huge with neighborhood character. I don't know what that sign's gonna look like. It's gonna be lit up or not. I think that would arise definitely to uh, a substantial change. But that's all I got. Thanks, Dave. Yep. So, moving forward here, in the interest of time as well, uh, there is, if we, as a group, majority feel that we need more information, what's the best way to get there, Chris? On, I would say, uh, uh, confining that, the answer to just landscaping, uh, because I think we should let, let the applicant, um, or, or we should, if the board feels it needs more information on lighting, we should, I think, f flesh that out a little bit in discussion before we reach that conclusion. Uh, that may be the right conclusion, but I think you want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, if the board wants more information on landscaping, it can do one of two things. Uh, it can ask the applicant for an extension of the time to make that determination, which it will provide in writing to the board no later than tomorrow morning, um, which could extend the amount of time that the board has to consider the substantial versus insubstantial question. Um, and the applicant, give the applicant another meeting to come back with more information. Or if, if, if the applicant doesn't stand up and say that they're willing to provide that extension, um, then we're left with an absence of information and I think that suggests that we've got a potentially substantial um, impact here, um, although that's ultimately for the board to decide. In that case, the board could vote that the proposed change in landscaping is a substantial change to the originally approved plans, and then we notice a public hearing for 30 days from now, and we're back talking about it in 30 more days. Um, the applicant then has the opportunity to appeal that to the Housing Appeals Committee. I'm not handicapping whether or not they will take that appeal or not, because again, they have the opportunity to come back in 30 days and convince you a second time um, that it is um, something that the board can approve. So that's, I think, the decision tree on mm -hmm. the landscaping. Either, either come back at your next meeting with the applicant here, agree that we can, post, we can kick this down the road for two weeks, or um, find it to be a substantial change. Or, if you go in next direction, uh, find that it's not substantial, um, in which case it's approved and it's all over with. You have to look at the 18th then. And that only works, and this is sort of irregular, um, and we would need 
a rather ironclad uh, extension agreement from the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, if so, the, the first we can cross that option off the list if the applicant is not willing to uh, continue this discussion for another two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Uh, I appreciate and, and understand the board's frustration. I, I get it. I, you know, we're all frustrated on some of this stuff, but I, I get it. I, I'm just curious, um, other than having, I think the side-by-side -side is, you know, when you start is a comparison of what was proposed versus what's there, and you could see where there's not landscaping, and you could see where there is landscaping, and you know I think that uh, I, I would hope that would be helpful, you know, just to you know literally the, the side by side. But if there's, I'm trying to gather what information the board would need to actually determine if this adding some here and taking some there rises to the level of what Mass Housing would consider a substantial change, even though it could still get approved. I, I'm just <coughs> I, I, so I'm just trying to understand what that specific information is that would help more than just seeing the side by side. Um, the one is side by side, one and all in one piece. It's but you, 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 it, if you do it, I mean, it does get like a little messy, right? You start if use different colors. I don't care how you do it, on overlay, whatever way you want to present it. But they, you, you got to see what you've you've done. In it it's to uh, okay, mitigate. Make, okay, makes sense. Now, you're asking us to make a decision here. Yeah. You have to prove your case. That's up to you well, to provide the evidence to us that, okay, this is what was proposed. This is what was approved in the comprehensive permit. This is what's there now. In the comprehensive permit, we had X number of square feet of landscaping. Now in the as-built, we have X number of square feet of landscaping. Compare the two of them. See, we have more now, or we have less now. We just eliminated mm -hmm. the whole west side strip of landscaping. How many square feet was that? To me, that looks like that could easily be 10% of the landscaping was eliminated, which 10% seems to be the criteria with mass housing for substantial and substantial. So uh, you, you've, I, I get you know, it. So that's what we need to compare. What was what was approved, what do we have now? Right, and I mean, more I would I'd say it, it's the number, right, of, of whatever was there. Um, I, I thought we had, we had done it um, by just showing the proposal. I, I understand what you're saying, but even play that down the road. You know, I, I would venture that mass housing, if we say, here's proposed and approved, is this, you know, because we moved some here and added some here, does that outweigh the need for affordable housing? I would venture to say mass housing would be a quick turnaround answer. We're happy to, if that's what the board is looking for, like an overlay or a count or whatever that information is, and to say then the board says, oh, there was 30 things here taken out and they added 30 here or they added 29 and the board says, if you put, get to 30, we don't think that's substantial. I get it. I just want to make sure we're on the same page because if if we do that and it's still determined, and we might as well just call it substantial, go down that whole road path, and now, we're gonna. What is two weeks worth? No, well, I'm, I'm, ha I'm we're happy to do it. To you, That's what I'm saying. As long as we thing, understand the whole thing with mass housing, what's it going to take you uh, if you don't if you don't believe the two week time frame? can get you out of this whole thing. We haven't got to the lighting a aspect of it, but I, I'm i not going to go there. Um, but the two-week aspect of it gets you out of the two things that are get, get you the occupancy permit, which you right now have in abeyance. You can't do anything with. Two weeks, is it, is it worth two weeks to you? I just, I, I agree. I just wanted to make sure we were providing in those two weeks' time what the board was specifically looking for so that we know, so we don't come back and say, hey, we asked you for X, and you gave us Y. That's all. So if, if it's, an, an, say, an overlay, I know it's hard to determine. I'm just trying to, what we could provide. If it's an overlay and a chart or, or even brick, whatever. I would like to see square foot areas of landscaping, what you had proposed, what was approved, and what is on your plan now, the square footage of landscaping, period. I would suggest that they might want to bring their landscape architect. Okay. Yeah. And the other the other question I have, now you put this walkway in, you have a strip between your fence that you're putting in and the walkway. 
What are you doing with that? Is that going to be mulched? Is that going to be grass? Is that going to be... It, where, is it, where are you talking? Oh, oh as, as you walk you, as you, way on the west side. As you come back, there's a small you've got a triangular, sliver. A slender triangular piece yeah. going down to Prescott Street. It's yeah. white. Well, you, you've it's, indicated nothing in that. What, what, are you going to uh, pave it? Are you going to mulch it? Are you going to grass it? I mean, what are you I'm, going to do with that? It's, it's, it's mulched as, as it actually appears, but the... Um, uh, up at the Prescott corner, there's nothing there because the fence oh. is right at the. Obviously, the that's the, the triangular point. And at, well, it's it's actually further back, but it, it's so small at that point that it's it's almost non-existent. As you right. get maybe 20, 25 feet back, there's maybe. And you get six to the back, eight. and it looks like you have a five, six foot strip back there that's between not, the fence and the wall. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I yeah, talk about the back part. There's room okay. back there. Yep. Yep. Something has something has to be done there. You're not going to leave a gravel. Right now, it's mulched. Okay. But Hillary suggested some things, too. Yeah. Some softscape that, regardless of which side it is on the path, um, I mean, that that's certainly, you're putting things together. You, you're giving us a final plan, basically, on the 18th. If you're going to include that on the plan, that, that doesn't bother me at all. I think it would placate maybe some of the board members I know it would be greatly received by neighbors, uh, people in the town. What, yeah, I, I, I make sense. Okay. So what we'll, we'll do is um, do that, uh, like it's some type of chart and overlay and, and, and address well, those. Basically, um, you're, you're giving evidence. You're trying to prove to the board. Right. That's an insubstantial change. Or even a benefit. It's up to you. Yeah. The onus is on you to prove it. Right. And so I guess what we'll, we didn't present it in a clear way on, on the changes that we feel like we where we took and added. So we will highlight that, and I think we could easily do it because we've added more landscaping, and I think it just to make it stick out clear to the board where that was taken and given sounds like um, is what you're looking for. Well, you know, to your point, and I, I want to wrap this up on this subject. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that if you went to mass housing with this thing, it would be an insubstantial change, okay, by their ground rules. But we're not mass housing. We're here trying to just see what, what was and what is and just as clear as you can and make a decision that it is one we could add that tree back to neighbors that the neighbors were back looking in? for. Yeah. Okay. I, you know. Yeah. And then just no. I, that, I, clear. Clear. And, and sure. And then it's the not. Then, the then it's a final. Then hands, it's a final plan. I think we're off. Sure. On, we're off on our way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and if we if they're, uh, I'm not sure what Hillary's suggestion specifically um, was for that. Well, yeah. there was some. There's things called that vertical planting. It's like a there's some nets that you can add, like a vine that goes up it that replaces yeah. some of that um, hardscape that you have taken the landscaping away, it can mitigate that and provide some of the screening that we were talking about previously, but more to the landscaping, like taking that vertical space. So it could be a net that goes in front of the parking, it could be that goes up the, the stockade fence some way that you're adding a vertical instead of just the horizontal plane. There's places in the vertical plane that you can add some planting. And then what we've tried and we'll show on the plan too is where we've added on what's more visible to the town along the streetscape is we've added a lot of landscaping. We'll just, we'll, I, I'm clear on the direction. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Can we try to do that? Yep. Yeah. So you, you're ready to put that in writing? You uh, need to do that before you leave this evening. Uh, Is that right, Chris? Well, we're, just, just so, so, we're, so we're, so we're, get it we're in agreement the that if we do that and we can demonstrate that we haven't dramatically reduced the landscaping, it's an insubstantial change. And then if Is something needed again, that's what we're agreeing okay. on. Okay, no, I, I just want to just well, make, I mean, make it clear. Then if, so. that, if we do, you know, what I don't believe the board is committing to that you have persuaded it yet. We have it. But, it is, it. but its comments have provided you some good direction yes, as to it. what it might uh, think based on additional information. So what we need, um, what I would be comfortable with if the applicant makes the representation on the record tonight, 
is if they commit that they'll get a written extension agreement of their request for an um, insubstantial finding of insubstantial change dated November 12, 2019. If they get a written agreement addressed to the board to me um, by tomorrow morning, I, I'm comfortable December, with that. Through, was it? through, I mean, two, if, we, if the board's meeting two weeks from tonight, we'll be back here two weeks from tonight. 19th. Um, through the end of close of business on the 19th to give you the notification as to whether it's made a finding of substantial, that this is a substantial, these are substantial changes or insubstantial changes. Okay. All right. You haven't been sworn in yet, but. <laughs> Uh, Chairman, that's not <coughs> chair of the select board. Uh, apologies, I came in late. Has the lighting issue that was raised already been We haven't addressed? even gotten to the lighting issue. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what do we need to think about? So I, I wouldn't vote that necessarily until we've got, we may need the same extension on lighting. Um, right. So I think we should. Unless we can package the two. We should. We should, we should, we should if we get there with lighting, we should package it all up together I before realize, we before we break. I'd, I'd like to make a comment before that. We have two cases behind us, okay, and you can see what's gone on. And I thought we picked landscaping as the easiest one, and, and here we are. And we haven't even talked about lighting or signage yet, so it could be a long night, all right. I guess one of the questions I would put to you is whether or not, rather than sit here, till it's time. From getting up in the morning for work, uh, whether we you might want to eat, both of you, I assume you're both here, want to continue this case to the next meeting. Does that make sense? Talking to the other applicants? Yes. <laughs> I've just we haven't even we haven't even opened the other two cases. We, we haven't opened them. Yet. I open understand them that. First. Yeah, yeah. But they're gonna okay. They're gonna be sitting here for a long time. Well. Maybe. It, the only other comment I'd add to that, if I could, is that we, we think we struggled with the landscaping for an hour and 45 minutes, in, in large part because it seemed as though we were under deadline to, to make a final decision on that tonight. I mean, that was our deadline. Now that we've secured an extension to get more information on that at your subsequent meeting in two weeks, it may be possible that it, 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 if the board feels as though it needs more information on lighting too, Maybe yeah. now that we've got the benefit of the two-week extension, okay. maybe we could get to the end point of that discussion. Let's get to the lighting earlier. Okay. Let's get to the lighting issue then. Mm -hmm. You want to get you want to readdress you the lighting? percentage of lighting. Yeah, case, I okay? actually think that's pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, the lighting we, we got it as opposed to you know we had a plan on lighting. Um, it, the revised plan was it got approved during the process. It changed. It did change the spec, um, the location, and the type of lighting. But the decision allowed us to add lighting um, for adequate safety and security in the garage. And we actually have the stamped letter from the electrical engineer that they've designed it in conformance with the ZBA requirements and to adequately provide for safety and security. Um, so I think it's you know. I actually, uh, while it's there, that additional information is presented um, about the lights, and um, it was just the electrical engineer, as they do when you do these, that change the light because he doesn't like you know, those type of lights and likes to have them. They're too bright, and they create dark spots, and they create glare. Um, and these lights you know, are th more than three times less bright. You just have to have much more of them to do it. So um, we've com submitted photometric plans, um, we've submitted the spec on the light, so I, I actually think we comply with the decision because it allowed us to add lights um, for safety and security purposes. It's in conformance with what was submitted in the building package, which was reviewed by the town. Uh, I'm going to start over on this side first, but I'm going to start with you, John, and because uh, Hillary wasn't even here at the last session. Oh, okay. So I'll come to her, at the <laughs> okay? Okay. I just had a couple of questions on the, on the motion sensors. Um, does that pick up individual bodies, person walking through the garage, or does it just pick Correct. up the vehicle? No, it's it's it's, it's a motion of people too. Yeah. Okay. Um, the time differential um, on that. You said that there is. When that goes off and it senses and all the lights go on in the garage again, 
Is there uh, a time factor that's built into that? Uh, and what is the time factor? Yeah, sure. I believe it was five minutes. Uh, that's the standard that they use. Not sure. um, but I, you know, um, it's not a long period of time. We had we uh, we've um, in fact just was it yesterday or today? I think it was yesterday. We walked out at the end of the day to look, and someone had come in a few minutes earlier, and the lights were off except for the ones in the middle that stay on, um, and all the all the motion lights were off already. It was only a, it might have been ten minutes, but it wasn't. And that was consistent with what was in the uh, requirements that the board uh, looked at and, and your engineer, lighting engineer, had put forward? I believe yeah. the original photo. The, the, the original plan didn't spe specify it. Didn't the have it actually, shut off. Yeah. So that, that plan assumed the lights would stay on all the time, the original plan submitted. Okay. Um, but again, that was a concept plan. The, the actual construction plan was submitted with the building I, permit package and approval. I just couldn't remember that far back, I guess. I'm getting old. Um, and then the, uh, the other question I had was, um, there are, there was, in the, at least in the stream of emails, there was one individual who said that the lighting uh, goes right into her bedroom and so forth and so on. My question is, um, on the, was that on the west side again? No, it couldn't have been. Mm -hmm. It was on the yep. West, yep. western side? Mm -hmm. um, is there a way of um, altering um, that to, di to diffuse the light from the garage um, to, to be ter almost terminated where your uh, pathway goes down on the westerly side? So in other words, it doesn't extend that far? I mean, if somebody's looking out the window, they're, they're going to see a light anyway, period. Right. Right. But I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not in somebody's bedroom sequence. If I can just try to clarify that, I believe what the abutter was talking about was the outside lighting on the balconies and porches, which aren't dark sky compliant. I believe you have already agreed that you'll go back and make them dark sky compliant. Uh. Just to, just to clarify, the photometric plan proposed that, that, that the ZBA had before and the one we presented on that western side, the candle lights are less than what was on the approved plan. Um, and that was submitted, and um, I'm sure Andrew could look, look and, and tell you, but the average was, and that side was less. What we did was we added, we changed the light um, uh, and added more because they're not as dark lights. Um, so you add more and you locate them. But we obviously have to provide for safety and security coming from cars, both uh, covered under the building and outside into the building. Um, so we've done, but I feel like the photometric plan we have um, is, has accomplished that as minimally changed as possible. I, I don't, and I actually think the decision allowed us to add lights um, under what we have done um, in terms of um, to, for safety and security purposes. But that, that was the that was the biggest. I, I I think that was the the greatest question was the photometric plan, or was it the outside lighting on the balconies? This originated from the garage lighting, but on our site visit, we noted that the outside lighting was not dark sky compliant as conditioned. But so that that that, that was not included. The applicant did not ask the board's permission to excuse that. Rather, that was flagged by staff, expressed to the applicant, and the applicant said, "Okay, we'll fix it. So that's not to the, the, okay. the outside facade. So just lighting. a photometric plan that we're looking at right now. It yep. is just the garage. Yeah, that, garage. Just very, very quick short story on that. The, the light we looked at initially was a pendant light. The exact same light as a wall mount light is not dark sky compliant. The pendant version is dark sky compliant. So we looked at it and said, oh, great, let's get these, but we want let's get the wall ones. We got them, put them up, and then when they pointed it out, we said, no, those are. We went and looked, and they actually aren't. Yeah. Only the pendant ones that we don't have are dark sky compliant. The ones we do have are not. So it was our mistake, and we're going to fix it. You're done? <laughs> yes, I'm done. Bob. Uh, in regards to the lighting, uh, 
I would consider, from what I've read here and from what I've seen, a tenth of a foot candle, I would consider an insubstantial change. I, I don't have an issue with the lighting at all, what they were asking. And yeah. got, and basically, that's all we're looking at now. I'm not looking at balcony lighting or anything else. This is just the, yes. the ambient lighting from the garage, which is at measured now at 13.3. Correct? 13. Right, but the, the specific size is the three. western side. And the original plan said 13.4. Yeah, and we're higher, and we actually have we, we have more lighting. We've changed the spec on the lighting, so I guess that's something we did change. Yeah. We changed the number and the location of the lights, um, the schematic. Yeah, this is something we, but, we didn't get um, into with the, with the what, I don't think, with the, you know, the original comprehensive permit. We don't get into the detail. As right. John has said before, it's a... It's a concept plan. And, and the, what was approved, I believe, the concept of the foot candles. And, and I think and the, that's the, the purpose of that was to show there was no spillage no. from the garage lights yeah. out onto the property. Right. And, if, and um, the, where we've had the people complain, which is the same people, two people, um, and I understand there's lights they see now, is from the western side. And the western side, if you look on the plan, there's actually less foot candles on that. Um, property line and the building line, um, but I understand. So part of the fence adding at the front was also to address the concern that people could see into the open garage there. So it was both that was trying to address um, that they could see in and there was light coming out. And I again, same thing. Ask anyone go by at night, five feet from our building on the ground as dark as could be. Now, can you see the light in the garage? Of course, I have a picture that shows you could see it, but the light on the street light is way brighter than the light coming from the garage, um, and that and but we and it also shuts off. Um, a Thirty-three percent, two thirds of them are on. They shut off at night and they're on the sensor. By code, you have to leave so many on just as pathway lighting. Uh, but I I actually venture that we, um, it's not even a, the, the, the spec and the location and that is a change, but the. Um, general, we were allowed to add lighting, and I think we've complied with that under the decision. Yeah. That's it. Basically, my, my stand on this is, yeah. Yeah. go ahead, Chris. I, I don't want to challenge the conclusion that this is insubstantial, um, but I do want to add one, okay. one point, which is that, and I don't want, actually, I don't want, also don't want to overstate the amount of time we spent talking about lighting during the original public hearing, but in the board's decision, it did approve um, a photometric plan. Right. Dated October 14, 2016, that showed the lighting at all places along the property line, and it approved a bollard and garage light specification set submitted okay. on October 18, 2016. So it, those, the specs for the original garage lighting and the resulting light spillage at the property line were both reviewed and approved specifically by this board in the original comprehensive permit. So I, I, again, these may be the right. difference between the, that. And As opposed this to when I said we could well be insubstantial, but I just right. wanted to note that it was something the board specifically reviewed and looked at when you did your first public hearing. Yeah. Nick, uh, it appears to me what you're doing is less intense, less obnoxious, less light spillage, better diffusion of light. Uh, my only question, because I looked at the color temperatures last time, that was something that was important to me. Did you guys change the color temperatures of the lights at all, or are they the same? I looked at wattage and lumens, and I am not. I, those are the two that I look at for oh, intensity. I, I, I don't want to venture even. Um, All right. I, I guess so they had like that. a cool blue or warm white, and how is that differing from the original plans? The, the um, I, I don't know. I have the spec. I am not. I don't want to pretend. I'm, That would just be my only concern. I, I just wouldn't want to be in a butter and having, you know, cool white or a bluish tint when I'm trying to sleep at night. Yeah, I think, so. I, I think it's, I would call it similar, maybe a little more um, soft than what's in here. Okay. Is that the, the case on that? Starts at okay. 
Are you done? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Uh, the, right. the color temperature on the one they see that it starts at 3,500. So but I don't, I don't recall what the, um, what the original, the original right. Calvin, whatever I call it was before. I believe the light, the light that we've installed is 3,500K. So it's the same then. I'm, I'm not sure. No, no, I'm looking. I don't Where's know it? what the original is. <laughs> Five, the original one was 5,000. If I'm reading it right, the type VL100s. Um, it looks like the original range, three different ones from 3,000 to 5,000, where these three are 3,500 to 5,000. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I never didn't even yeah. look at color. Good question. Yes. I don't, I mean, I wasn't here at the beginning, so I don't know. I just got two quick, if I could, just two, yeah. two quick questions. Um, Matt, the original approved plan set had a photometric plan that showed the readings all the way out to the property line. I have not seen in your new submission a photometric plan that does the same. It looks to me like it's just got the numbers in the garage, but not out beyond the limits of the garage itself. Um, do you have a one that does, or can you? Speak to the. I, I did speak ask to one be, today. Speak to it being zero everywhere. Um, it's it's um, the um, uh, there's a recommended candlelight. So the, the the we never there's the parking lot in the back, not in the building, has parking, and um, even during the building process. So the um, there's a recommended candlelight for a space, which I think is one candlelight. It's not a set in stone. We don't accomplish that. There's spots in our back that are dark, um, but we're pretty close on that. So the electrical engineers and the site engineers always kind of battle of who, where their responsibility lies. They always like to say, oh, we did the building, the civil guys do the site. Um, the, I you know, did request that from them, um, I, and I, I have it, but you know, I wanted to show the building and show what the differences are. Um, especially on the western side where people have complained. Um, and I think the decision allowed us to add lighting for security and safety purposes. So, it, you know, and we but have a... Just com for purposes of com comparing, mm -hmm. what you originally proposed to what you've built now, we had originally a photometric plan that showed measurements predicted measurements, but measurements at the property. We don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't have that right now with in, 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 on a plan that is representative of your current garage lighting. Right. Well, I, I, Why I, don't we need that? I anticipated today when I was trying to just do last minute homework that you may not have that, so I requested it and I got it. Why you don't need it is because we have a stamped letter from the engineer saying the garage lighting, which we're talking about specifically, was designed for the ZVA requirement and was designed to adequately provide for our safety and security. So if they added lights or didn't add lights, um, but I could certainly submit a plan, but I think the important part is what that we did get from the electrical engineer at the statement of how they designed the garage lighting. That was my next question, and that is the engineer says that the standard for general parking in pedestrian areas at night and ramps and corners at night is five foot candles. But the lighting as installed is currently at 13.3. He says that it will get less over time, but he doesn't say what it will sort of ramp down to when it's done. Does that make sense? Well, what time is? Yeah. Um, so if the standard, is, he's, he's saying that the standard is five foot candles, but you are currently at 13.3. He next says that it will decrease over time, but he does not say what it will decrease down to. And we don't have a plan showing what the measurements are going to be in the front. Okay. As I read the letter, I mean, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I read the letter, he's saying that you currently exceed the public safety standard that he's citing as the basis for what you've done. 
because it is 13.3 and that standard is 5. Is that wrong? I, I think you're uh, interpreting it a little wrong. I think he's designed it, as he says, according to the ZBA requirements. And he's designed it, from his professional opinion, to adequately provide for um, safety and security. And it, the, that plan is what we submitted for part of the building permit plan. And, um, and you know, I, 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 and that plan, that's the candle, the candlelight plan, you have to look at it on a, a big screen TV to have any, without me blowing it up. No, I've got it blown up. Yeah, no, right, that's what you have to and blow it up. And I can't make out the, the new one on the, um, Some of this stuff, you have to use common sense. When you go in the garage, you see the lighting. It seems adequate. It seems like every other parking garage you're in. It's not particularly bright. It's not particularly dark. It's evenly lit. It's well. It feels safe and secure. But it's, I don't think anybody here would walk in there and say this is obnoxious. There's too much. My light. only, my, my, this, the board is not a, in a position to evaluate the lighting of the garage as it sits here tonight. All the board can do is evaluate the paperwork that you submitted compare it to the paperwork that it approved mm -hmm. three years ago. Right. So all my, all my only questions are directed toward asking if there was, and I had missed, a photometric plan that provided all of the same information as the photometric plan that the board approved in the original comprehensive department. And I think the answer was that we don't, we don't, you have, you have it, but we, the board does not. And, but the, I think what the focus was on um, the part of the decision that allowed to add lighting for adequate safety and security, and the engineer is saying what he's done is adequately provide for safety and security. So if 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 I um, what we what we did that's what they provided us to show what that lighting was at the building corners. Um, but I you know if there, I I'll. I, I did get it at the end of the day, but I didn't think it, I, because the change is based off of the decision which allowed us to allow lighting, not that we changed the photometric plan. It was more focused on the, a bit, the allowance of changing and adding lighting for a specific reason, which we have done. And the bollards are not any closer, the lit bollards are not any closer to the property line than they were shown in the plan. We just ask for that to be included if we're moving on to that. But it, I, it I don't want to drive the discussion, but it, but to me that's an important piece of um, th that's a piece that the board had in its original submission. It was part of what the board approved, and there's no basis for comparison in the record that was present presented to you tonight. Well, Makes a lot of sense. When well, you come back in two weeks, mm -hmm. you bring that back with you next time. I can, but I I uh, my point being was. And it, it, the, was the, the rationale was the engineer of record stamped a letter saying he's designed it per the decision to adequately provide safety and security, not um, irregardless um, of what was on. It wasn't a comparison of, of that plan versus this plan. Here's the plan. I could even, you know, I just didn't, I don't. And I, and I don't mean to challenge I, I, the engineer's public safety statements in, in any way. Um, my only concern is that. Although the board, original the board's original decision left some space for additional lighting for safety purposes, I don't believe that allowed you free reign to increase the light spillage at the at the property lines. The board had a plan the original when it originally rendered its decision showing that there would be no such light spillage. Uh, it doesn't have that plan now with respect to the 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 new lighting installation. If you could provide it, I think that would likely end the, end the analysis. It's just a question of having that information for the board to consider. Yeah. What, what I was trying to point out is the westerly side, again, where the only people have, have said anything on the approved photometric plan at the building and the plan I provided you, you could see the, the number difference in that it's less there um, where, well, we, we've actually had a clearance just for a point of reference. But um, again, I, that, to me, the letter from the engineer that it's a, a safety thing and seems to be, um, doesn't give us carte blanche to shine lights in people's properties. Um, but allow, if, you know, if it was specifically for a safety thing, it almost does, but that's not what we've done. That's why we provided the photometric plan. Uh, happy to provide, it's not gonna does the, does change. Does the photometric plan you have not show um, the, the foot candles out to the edge of the sidewalk? 
I'm Prescott. Not inside the garage. Just the garage. Mm -hmm. It may go to the walkway on on the western side. It doesn't go to the rear property line or anywhere in the parking area to the rear of the building. And I don't think there can be any spillage of light past the fence. It's an opaque fence. So. Yeah, I'm not, it, just so, uh, so you, on the western side of the property, on the plan, Chris, the, the, the ZBA plan, it had numbers of 1.8, 2.1, 1.9, 2.3, 2.9, 2.1, 1.5 .1, at the building. On our new plan, which has a lot more readings, 1.21, 1.31, 1.3842, 1.44, blah, blah, blah. So the ZBA average on that side was 2.09. On our plan, it's 1.36. Those numbers are on the plan. If you want to show, I mean, it's less at the building line there. If you want to, I mean, to show you where it is five more feet from that. Um, but, you know, that, that, you know, any lights we added, actually, the impact was more in the building itself than, um, and, and some on the, um, the making sure we have enough candlelight for people getting out of their cars and getting to the building stairwells and egresses. So that pathway has to be lit properly. So that's, that's all we did and we provided photometric. But I, I just, I, to me, I thought the focus was the having a, a stamped letter from the engineer of record that that's how they designed it, um, not the specific um, candlelights at every location. I just wanted to point out you know, we've heard the most complaints. Two, two and a half years ago when we were doing all of this, we were, we were working off of a, um, an engineer's plan that we, we assumed was appropriate. I mean, that, that you were providing it, that the engineer got up and talked before the board, the board or not. Um, it, was Metro. it was just an arc. It was, it was the architect. They don't design the actual electrical lighting. And the photometric plan, those are always prepared by light companies. So, so I'm, this, this, can, can you include that, what you just read off now, to bring in, if, well, we, if we go to that direction? But I mean, the point, of, the point I'm trying to make here is that there's a little bit of slippage on both sides. I mean, we're taking it because it's a conceptual design, and we're trying to document that. And we get an engineer that says, this is what it is. And now we'll get another engineer that says well, that, that still meets the safety requirements, but it doesn't meet the specifics um, that were documented in the original plan that was given to us by the engineer, your engineer, that was given yeah, well, to that, us. That, but that wasn't an engineer. Okay, so the clear. architect. Yeah, but that's a big difference. An, an electrical engineer has to design this um, for all different types of purposes. An architect isn't doing calculations on all those things. Um, and, you know, they have to meet code requirements at the end of the day. Um, and that's just the same thing with the building. But the lighting, um, additional lighting shall be provided at needed to adequately provide for safety and security at the building egresses and stairwells. Um, and, and, you know, it, you, I mean, obviously everyone, it, you have to have, you know, the safety and security from, you know, in getting from your car egress path to the building stairwell. So, you know, that, and I actually, we are, the, 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 you know, any, I just pointed in reference, which you have that plan of the candle lights at that building facade, right, at that building westerly edge there, just as a reference point of, you see the light, I get it, you see it, but it's actually, like, specifically there, less candle lights than what was proposed. Is that both state and federal standards for the safety, quote, safety lighting? Yes. Okay, so... I just, um, that, I mean, that's why I was more focused on the electrical engineer letter of how they designed it. Um, but that, we still didn't provide I think, photometric. I think with, with what Chris said, you know, it doesn't hurt to put that in, too. We've already committed to, to two weeks from now. It's saving both of us, all both the board and, and, and you, the developer, to get to the point where he wants to go, rather than going through this long, protracted, going back to... I think this is different than the landscape plan, though, because the, the, the plan of record officially changed when the building permit was issued. So the, the conceptual plans that were presented to the board were effectively amended by operation of state law when the building permit was issued. And that became the, the, um, the, the record documents for the, for the property. 
So, um, so we, just as a point of order, I don't think we want to go that route. All right. I don't think you want to use that as an argument. No, no. I mean, we. The, the I was lighting, about to jump up and say I disagree yeah. with that yeah. statement. Right. You don't want to use that as an but, argument. All right. Well, the, you know, that's why we. That's why okay. we wanted to provide the lighting, uh, play, the, the stamped letter from the electrical engineer, who's an electrical engineer and an architect, who designed this. Um, it, you know, and they have, you know, stamped it. Said we've designed it for the ZBA requirements and to provide adequate safety and security. So, I mean, that to me, that, you know, it did change. And I just specifically wanted to talk, like, just show, you know, in some spots it's probably more, in some spots it's less, but the it was designed for safety and security, which I don't think, um, you know, it could be, you know, wasn't designed for any other purpose. For, so it, if we could, you know, I, I just think that that's something that could be ruled on and, and not have to come back to provide um, uh, uh, we've, we've provided a plan on that, but I know. The, the only other question I have, Matt, is that the standard that is cited in the engineer's letter is five foot candles for inside the garage. And I think he, he goes on to say that it's 13.3. So he, he says in his own letter that it is brighter than the standard requires. And, and he also says that that's just a guideline, it's not a hard. Oh, and every think, engineer has to design it to what they think is safe. He doesn't. Ex he does not explain the gap between the five and the thirteen point three. There may be a perfectly good explanation for it, but he does not explain why. In his expert opinion, that was something that needed to be done for public safety reasons. I think it would be helpful just bring that information maybe to the next meeting, and we'll wrap it all up. Fair enough. And I don't think we. Uh, Excuse me. Yes, Vanessa. Hi. May I ask, has the board received an as-built plan from the developer so that the board can compare what was actually constructed, lights included, in what was the, in the original comprehensive permit? Uh, we don't, uh, we don't, yeah, we don't get as-built plans. Huh? We don't no. typically get no. the as-built plans. That's no. the daytime government. I would think that. that the as-built would typically go to the building department. Um, yeah. and, and if there's a the review there exposes a difference that hasn't been accounted for yet, then it would come, need to come back to the board for any additional changes that exist in the approved plans and the as-built plans would need to come back to the board again for another round of review. Um, we have not received a final as-built plan because that's part of the condition of the final certificate of occupancy. They've only asked for a temp certificate of occupancy previously. So, so at the final, they have to supply all the conditions and supply all the required documents. So the amendments that are being requested, the changes that are being requested now, are there three in total, landscaping, lighting, and signage, is my understanding? Yes. Is that correct? Once those are completed, will you then receive the as-built plans so that you have the opportunity to compare to the original comprehensive permit? So that if any additional issues are flagged, then it comes before the board? Or will well, the occupancy permit be issued as soon as these three issues are resolved? I think at the final at the final discussion and the final decision whether they're substantial or insubstantial, then a decision will be made what they have to supply. If we want a whole new plan showing the exact lights, the ex exact foot candles, everything, the exact landscaping plan, what was eliminated, where the square footage is, what was added. So we can incorporate all that into one final plan before the final certificate of occupancy. There's a condition in the, in the comprehensive permit that says prior to issuance of a final CO, they need to do two full size set, uh, two full size sets of as built plans to the building department. I assume that they're not there yet, but at some point that would need to happen. That's a site as built plan. That is a site as built plan. Yes. One last thing. <clears throat> I drove by the place on the way here this evening. Very bright. Just reiterate and summarize for me what kind of controls will be in place to control that lighting during overnight hours. Which lighting are you talking about? I'm talking about garage lighting mainly. The, the that's, what I, that's what that's what I saw is very very bright. Um, when and the garage lighting, um, two thirds of them shut off at night and they're on a sensor timer. So that, I mean a, a motion sensor timer. So when people come in, they they turn on. And then it, it goes up to the bright level, brightest, to the regular level mm -hmm. of lighting. Yeah, but that, well, there are lights that are off that turn on. There are some that stay on all the time. 
and then there's two thirds of them are on motion, so they only turn on, but they, there's only one brightness level. And the timing for that? Uh, well, I believe it's five minutes, but I could, I am not, I could get that answer for you. No, no, as to where they turn off at night and turn on. I think it's just dust. Oh. I, I actually think it's all the time because you actually have to provide um, lighting in the garage even during the yeah. daytime. Um, there's rules on going into a dark garage from an outside light space and the change in light and glare and all that type of stuff. There's, um, that's why electrical engineers d design them. Um, so, um, you know, it, it's, um, but the foot candles on those, if, and, and I, if you go by at night, and I ask you to, if you want to, and if you walk the sidewalk and you look down, you know, it's not spilling over, but it is, you know, you do see light because it's a building that now is, you know, has light on it, so. So as we stand right at the moment, you're coming back on the 18th. Mm -hmm. 18th. Yeah. Bring back a comparative of past and now. On landscaping. Being, yeah. And you yeah. also bring with you the well, site for the metric. Lighting. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot easier for everybody, board included, to look at that. It's hard to look at it even on a, a full-size plan because right. it, there's such small numbers. So I would, I'll submit it electronically. I'd only ask that if everyone could, you know, it, it's easier to look at it electronically if you're able to, because you can mm -hmm. zoom in and see the numbers. But I, you know, I, I, that, I've that seen it, so I know. The same letter yes. of authorization. Yeah, so, and, and the applicant has committed to providing by tomorrow morning to me a letter of ex extending the time uh, for the board to make a determination as to whether it's requested changes with respect to landscaping and lighting are substantial or insubstantial changes. Now these two issues are what you really need resolution of. But I just agreed on something for the applicant. If I could just get the applicant to agree one more time that I, that I, letter is coming to I, our mind. I, um, yes, it will email our letter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, uh, I would like to actually talk with you after about it, so. Okay. Yeah. But we need to know if we got the extension or not. You have right the now. extension. I still would like to talk to you about it, about specifics of process with you after. But the extension, I will, I will do it tonight if I can. If not tomorrow morning. And resolution is there a, the, it, it, is there a preferred approach that we haven't discussed? I think it's more pro. No, no, there's not. I think it's just more appropriate to discuss offline. Then. So those two issues, the landscaping and the lighting, are really what. We need to resolve. Yep. For the and and I, 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 I um, understand what Robert I make. You know, I, I understand that that approach to looking at it. So I, I, uh, yes. I know it's frustrating for everyone. So I apologize. We have not addressed signage tonight, and I don't see really a reason why we should address. Well, I raised <laughs> the point earlier that because that was something the board did not address even a little bit in its original decision, and had it included a condition that said we're not approving any signage that that could properly be treated as a substantial change to come back for a public hearing. So I don't know if we want to suspend that um, discussion till later on, or if the applicant just wants to notice it, the board to notice the public hearing on the signage as a substantial change, and then we got the 30-day 30 clock, 30 clock ticket. Chris, if I might, yeah. just to throw more fire into it. The applicants applied back in June for the signage. Um, on the application, I know it was discussed that it wasn't going to be illuminated, but the application says externally illuminated by others. And I issued a denial letter on June 12th. That was never appealed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we want to go the appeal variance or if they want to try and tie it into the comp permit. I hadn't considered the denial of a building permit for the signage. But I do think that, uh, and, but I'll think about that. But I do think that it is possible for the applicant to get this signage approved through the ZBA as an amendment to the comprehensive permit. I just think that since that was not anything that was ever discussed in the first hearing, and there was a condition that specifically prohibited any, any signage as a result of that absence of discussion, um, that that's one that's properly considered as a substantial change um, in a public hearing. Does, does so, not CPDC have to get involved in that one? They can CPDC in June issued a certificate of appropriateness to approve the awnings that were applied right. for and noted that the wall sign would need a variance from the Board of Appeals before any approval. They could not approve the wall sign because, as Matt mentioned, 
you can't approve a sign above the second floor of SIL. So. So it's pretty difficult to act on the variance tonight. You, you wouldn't act on, no, there's no, no variance has been applied right, for. No right. They That's have correct. asked for this, to, for the signage to be approved as an insubstantial change. Right. I think that is a stretch and um, it's best discussed later on in the scope of a public hearing. The only question is whether the board should make the finding that it's substantial, the signage is a substantial change tonight, which would trigger the deadline for a public hearing um, 30 days out, or whether we continue that discussion too. Uh, and I have no strong opinion about that. I'd actually like to, pr oh, sorry, I apologize. I'd actually <laughs> just like to bring it in, in two weeks and then show you at least what it, what that specifically is. And it could be, that could be a quick conversation and you determine it's substantial. I don't think us waiting the two weeks is that big a deal. And at least show you what it is, so you have you're informed and make that decision. And just but just to reiterate what I heard before, that's separate from the certificate of occupancy. It's not part of that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Mark can jump in if he disagrees with me, but I don't believe. No, the signage need, would have nothing to do with the yeah. uh, CO. Okay. Because it's not it, the lighting and the landscaping are, are obligation or your obligations under your existing Please. permit. You don't. You're not obliged to put up any signage. If you want to, you can come yeah. back and talk about it. It, is, would that be okay? I mean, we won't spend a while if you just look, listen for five, ten minutes and say, hey, that sounds substantial. What's it substantial? I just figured at least let us present kind of. Okay, so now we're talking. on that, or would you rather? It's up again. I, you know, just we haven't had a chance to talk about it. Well, we can have a discussion on the board here as to whether we consider that substantial or not at this point. All right. We'll start with that. Uh, I would, off the bat, and again, I haven't given you the benefit of the doubt to even hear you out, so I feel like this might even be premature, but I feel fairly confident. It's a huge change to the neighborhood character of big signs. So I would lean towards it being substantial. I, I agree, but it, that's why I would at least like to present why I feel it may not be. I, I just don't think the two weeks of us saying, why we wait just the two weeks we're waiting on the other ones, at least let me show you. Um, what, and I and I agree on its face. It sounds it. It's just you know, and you get, it may, and you hear the facts and may say, oh yeah, that, that actually isn't it. May it is. But the, well, us waiting the two more weeks on it. You've asked so us so you wait. So you want to present the sign on the sign? We'd like to right now or in two weeks? No, no. I, we'd like to present in two weeks. Okay. We're not going to yeah. make people waiting here wait another hour for me to <laughs> talk signs. And so now we're talking about an extension of through the nineteenth of the time for the board to make a finding on the applicant's request for uh, revisions to this comprehensive permit with respect to landscaping, lighting, and signage uh, to make the finding as to whether that is a substantial or insubstantial change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who wants to take credit for that motion? <laughs> <laughs> no move. You did? A second? Second. <laughs> All in favor? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. I apologize to the rest of the group for taking so long. Nice to meet you. Okay. Chris, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Not too high. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Well, don't leave yet. That was the easy one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, the next case is uh, number 19-25, 107 Main Street. I'll read. I didn't hear you. I just had a letter that because I filed an appeal on something with the um, conservation committee that may affect... It says that um, Have we received that? A activity may not commence on any portion of the project. Um, site subject to the jurisdiction of the act until a final SOC is issued. So I don't know if that would include this evening or not. That's the date of that? The date, yeah. October. October 8th. Can I read this for the benefit of the board? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 
addressed to the, uh, it's received from the Department of Environmental Protection relative to 107 Main Street, notice of site visit, addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Panush Dabane. Okay, okay. The Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, Northeast Regional Office, Wetlands Program has received your appeal of the above referenced filing in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40. In preparation for the issuance of superseding orders and conditions, a site visit at the project has been scheduled for Wednesday, October 16th at 10.30 uh, a.m. The purpose of this inspection is to determine if the area is significant to the interests of the Act and to informally discuss the relevant issues. Activity may not commence. Who is it? Huh? That's 107 Main Street. Yeah. We're not there yet. But that's the one we're going to just start. That's the one we're just going to start. Right. But, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, I thought you would, we, we using that for, um, no, I just want to see whether this, I, we concluded this yeah, would affect I, the I, hearing I think, of this case today. I think the applicant who's, who's here was just looking for some guidance in regards to does this letter have an impact on tonight, whether she yeah, should yeah. continue or not. Or and frankly, I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't no. think so? No. Okay. Okay, I'm going to open up this case. Thank Are you reading the... Uh, Legal notice, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, December 4th, 2019, at 7 p.m. <laughs> uh, yeah. The application of Meisner Green Corporation, pursuant to MS General Law Chapter 40A, Section 10, for a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaw Sections 4, 5, 2, and 5, 3 as may be determined by the Zoning Board to allow construction of parking for the existing commercial use in the S-15 portion of a split-zoned property located at 107 Main Street in Reading. Unless there's an objection, I will dispense from the reading of the abutters list other than to say that they have been notified, as were the Select Board, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this Board is taken under oath. So if anyone here wishes to speak on this case today, would you please stand at this time and raise your right hand. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak, okay. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Good evening, 9.35. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> My name is Jeffrey Brem. You will meet up a little later. Uh, I'm with Meisner Brem Corporation, Mr. Chair, and also with me tonight is Michael Palmer with the facility restaurant, actually the property owner, 107 Main Street, Reading. LLC, Michael Palmer, manager. Um, this is the last group that we've been in front of. Uh, we've been in front of the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. We're essentially done with the Conservation Commission. And as the abutter has indicated, she has appealed that decision to the DEP. They did have a site walk on October 16th. I was present, Conservation Commission was present, the abutter was not present. Uh, so we're still waiting that pending decision. It does have nothing to do with this hearing whatsoever other than the fact that we need that decision in order to go forward to do any work on the site. Um, so what happened, and I'm going to be following, if you want to follow this little narrative that I put together in your package, mm -hmm. it will help you find out where I'm at. So Fusilli's Restaurant, which used to be um, Sam's Bistro, Sam's Bistro. Mm -hmm. and part of that was the Wayside Exhibition area. It's on Main Street and Hopkins Street here, right off the highway, uh, 107 Main Street. It's an existing building currently being used as a restaurant. There's 49 parking spaces on the site. It was approved in 2010. I'm talking fast now because I'm going to try to get this background material done quickly. Uh, it was approved in 2010, built accord, basically according to the plan, and as what was done, submitted, and they're operating. Uh, the parking requirement uh, met the requirement for zoning. However, 
in the intervening nine years, uh, Mr. Palmer's restaurant is very successful, and on occasion he runs out of parking on the site. Uh, so, this Hawkins Street is does allow for on-street parking, and so some of the vehicles for the restaurant use has been on that parking. Recently, he informed uh, his employees to park on Hopkins Street because some of the patrons would come in, realize the parking spots on the property were being used, and left, so went someplace else. So now that even exacerbated the problem on Hopkins Street even worse, because before you had a patron that would be there for an hour and a half or so, and now you have an employee there for an entire shift. So we're trying to solve that problem. And the solution actually came to us with a change over the intervening years, the change in the wetland regulations, I'm going to get to that in a minute, which allowed for this parking on site. So let's go through the request for the variance and the background that you need me to go through. Uh, so we're just trying to put in seven. It was originally nine spaces, but planning board conservation, going through that whole process, it, it whittled it down. We're proposing seven spaces, a bunch of landscaping, some screening, uh, some other details on the plan that's sort of relevant, but not necessarily the, the main focus. The main focus is we want to build the seven spaces, but there's a zone line right here. Uh, this is F15, this is uh, business A, and we, we can go into that zone line by 30 feet. That's how this work was done. But this is just beyond the 30 feet, therefore the need for a variance. That's the basically page one. So, as you know, when you do a variance, I have to have uh, hardship, and the hardship has to be based on soil shape or topography, any one of those three. I'm saying that this is a shape issue. When I drew a picture of the shape, as you can see, it's basically a rectangular piece of land with an extension, a 58-foot wide by 80-foot extension that goes onto the back of the property to the east. Um, that's unusual. It's also unusual for the district, and uh, that's why the shape is, if it was squared off, it wouldn't have that issue. I also bring up that soils again. Back when um, this plant was originally permitted in 2010, this area was considered buffer zone and not available for uh, parking whatsoever. But the laws changed, some of the regulations at the state level and the town level changed. We use soils as opposed to just wetlands now. And the soils changed. We hired a new botanist. They went out there reflagged the wetland, made this available, and it's been approved, it's not, which is good that we're done with conservation, because it's been approved by the local conservation. It has been appealed, but it, as far as local uh, Reading Conservation Commission, they've approved it. And on that issue, I do have a handout that um, me and my staff looked at, if I can, hey, Mark. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Mm -hmm. you can pass it now. This just shows the, that this isn't the only lot that has this shape issue or this extension into the uh, S15 zone. You, sh you show, when you get it, the, the, you'll see the silly restaurant there. Just to the south, this property here. Also, it's a very rectangular piece of property, but that land utilizes land beyond the 30 feet. As you can see, that's number one. Down the road a little bit to the north, uh, another commercial property uses a large portion of the uh, S15 zone as uh, parking, and across the street, another commercial property uses it. So it's not unusual for the area, and that's important because you have to make that as one of your criteria as well. So back to the hardship, I'm saying that the shape of the property, having this extension is a hardship. The soils we're a hard, are a hardship because it relates to the original use of the property. Um, and as far as the interest to the town, obviously we're saying that it's not, it's not a detriment to the public good, it'll actually be an improvement to the public good because we're, as right now, we have parking uh, that is off, off property, off-site property on the street. Uh, we're trying to alleviate that and move that onto the site for the purposes of the site. Uh, and actually, I like the language I, I wrote at the bottom of this uh, submission to you. The proposed expansion of seven parking spaces is exactly what Section 9 of the zoning ordinance intended to provide on site, off street parking for the facility and location suitable for the user customer and without detriment 
detrimental impact to the environment or the community. The granting of this relief will further the purpose of the zoning ordinance, will be a benefit to the neighborhood, and will not nullify or derogate from the intent of the zoning act. Rather, it will reinforce it. That's what your zoning act tends its purpose to do, is to provide some on-site on parking, off-street parking. That's what we're trying to do here. So where we are left with is, yes, we are uh, waiting DEP's decision on the appeal for the work in the buffer zone. We went to planning board. They were just about to approve it. They, would, they had drafted a uh, draft decision, and that's when it was noticed that this was in the S-15 zone. So they, they've held their decision in abeyance, waiting for your decision, figuring that they can't approve something that's not allowed use-wise without you providing the variance. Is that right, Andrew? He's shaking his head yes. So, so and they did write a letter um, as part of your application package. I included it. They wanted to make a statement to you telling them, telling you that um, the CPDC feels that the proposed site plan modifications and design are appropriate, but makes no comment on the use variance. Their purpose of that comment was to basically say, you're in charge of the use variance, but as far as the design of the seven spaces, they're okay with it. So that's where I'm at. Having a butter. Mark, you have any comment? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Hillary, any comments? just south of this, is that correct? This is actually South Main Street Business right. A, that would be where that zoning right, where is. that is. And I think this exact property was used as an example for the uh, parking issue that is discussed in that new zoning that we dis um, discussed during the town meeting. This I believe this amazing. did come up during town meeting, but we did not highlight it specifically during our zoning. Not you. Right. Uh, the public the comment. Yes. There the, yep. the meeting member comment um, as yep. being a problem with the on street parking. Yep. So, <laughs> my. <laughs> John? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I've got one important thing. Yeah. We've made a commitment that these seven spaces would be utilized for employees only. It will be signed as well, and the employees, instead of parking on the street, will be parking here. Yeah, I think I read that. Well, I think so, I read that. I I and I didn't that. mention it verbally. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, approved, uh, I think, a variance for something very special, a little further, a little further north from this on Main Street for yeah. development. The one we recently did. Yeah. That was a special permit. Mm -hmm. because, it, because, because it meant a different set of use, criteria, right. but it was very much the same. In, right, same you know, intent. Yep. Different, you know. And if this is the intent of town meeting was to put modify that to give us the option, you shouldn't say give us the option, give the CPDC and the, and the town staff a little bit more discretion on what it can be used for. Within the multi-use, right? So what happened at town meeting was we proposed allowing more, strictly allowing more mixed use on South Main Street. We had incorporated parking requirements of a minimum of 1.25 spaces per business. Um, and that came up if it should be a minimum or a maximum um, and we ultimately ended up at minimum because we know there's parking constraints on some of these shallow lots. So that was that discussion. Okay. Um, now, as to your plan here, you've asked for um, eight parking spaces, right? Seven. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, the seventh one is tucked in. Uh, at the top, well, the top of the plan. Um, so that's that's uh, definitely um, 
I would say in the owner space. <laughs> right. Uh, because nobody's going to uh, yeah. get in and get out of that very easily. Um, and I know the um, previous, although we don't have the um, the actual um, decision when this was um, redone years ago, but there was some parking uh, allowed on Hopkins Street. Was there not? If I can, I, I've been doing this for so long now, I know a little bit of the history. This is completely <laughs> hearsay. But what I heard from the hearsay is there were some complaints that went up to the selectman level, and they asked if Hopkins Street could be used for property such as this, kind of hypothetically. And the Board of Selectmen said, yes, it could be. It's, there's no restriction that says a particular spot can't be used by a particular owner. I think that was the only discussion. But I may be wrong, because I just said it's hearsay, so we have some people in the audience that may have more Currently, information. I believe one side of the street is no parking. The other side is unregulated, which means any member of the public can park, park on here. that street. You know, you can't discriminate an employee versus customer versus neighbor from someone on the house. So. And well, that right. side that's open, uh, unrestricted, is the side that we're talking about Closest to, closest to this property. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, my, my recollection is that when we opened, we had availability to park on both sides. This is uh, not Stone Sorry, name name sorry. Name. Michael Palm, I'm the owner of Fuzilis. Sorry. So when we opened, there was availability to park on both sides of Hopkins, but it became an issue almost immediately where we, re, we, we had to go before the town again a second time, and they restricted parking um, from the main street in uh, a certain amount of distance on one side it was restricted but i believe we opened with both sides and then it got put, it got pulled back a little bit and restricted a little bit okay yep can i just no. ask at what point i'm allowed to speak or should i wait we'll until it it's done we'll okay open, open shortly. Um, my question would be what what is this the staff complement for the restaurant? Seating? Seating? No, no staff. Staff. Oh, staff? Uh, I believe when we got uh, approved, we were approved for 10 on the busiest shift. And what is it presently? Same. 10. Yep. Okay. So the seven that we're looking for is only going to partially take care of this. Right. So the discussion that we had prior with the other committees. You know, is this going to resolve the problem? And I think what the general understanding was, it's not going to resolve the problem, but it's certainly going to better it. Um, and it could potentially resolve the problem, for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, completely. Right? But Friday, Saturday, yeah, you, Sunday. you're overwhelmed, Sunday's busy. So there's a, there's a real opportunity with the additional seven to control all parking to on-site during the preliminary, you know, the three, three, four days of the work week, will it resolve it towards the week end? Probably not, but seven on site versus seven on Hopkins is, uh, is certainly a, a, a significant improvement. The seven car, right? So. Uh, before you came before um, CPDC and, and, and the ZBA, uh, I assume that you looked for other um, means of taking care of your 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 staffing uh, parking. Yes, sir. So uh, again, within the within the town departments, uh, everybody's been trying to help brainstorm a solution to the problem, um, and so we've discussed uh, uh, valet. Uh, we've discussed leasing other properties, and when you look at the uh, dynamic of where that property sits, almost everything's an impossible. There's no there's no possible solution because valeting would most would almost definitely be across the street. So now you so you run in valet people staff across four lanes of 28 at night. Um, We've looked, Meineke has been very helpful, though it's just recently changed hands. So that's 
uh, and as well as uh, the building 95, uh, which is our abutting property. Um, and what was discussed pretty heavily this go around was can we make an agreement? And what I think we all realized was to ask another property owner to sign a commitment to, to a lot to help us would really be an. So, for example, if you own Dr. O'Brien's building at 95.5, and I said, Dr. O'Brien, will you sign an agreement with me that I can park my people there? Why would he? he? Right? Because he doesn't want the liability. He doesn't want the, uh, right, the, you know, people falling, uh, people bumping into the building with their cars, whatever, you know, so. There's also I, a great change between the yeah, two properties. Yeah, 95 is probably four or five feet up. And, uh, and then you look at Meineke, and again, that just changed hands. They've been super to us over the years, but with every owner, you don't know what's, you know, what's really going to be allowed and not allowed. Well, the majority of your business is done at night, correct? Right, right. And uh, so Meineke, luckily, uh, is a daytime business for the most part, um, but our business would say five to close, right? Five to nine is our, str is our strongest periods, and Meineke does close. Uh, oh, well, I'm not sure what their hours are, but sometimes it'll be six or seven o'clock. Sullivan so, Tire. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's Sullivan Tire. So, they are open longer hours. I'm yeah, sure. some of them run a little bit longer. I think even the last owner that was renting prior to Sullivan um, originally started with a six, seven o'clock because we had the discussion and uh, he wouldn't commit to us. And I will tell you that staff, um, we had a meeting with staff and the assistant, town manager got involved to try to help out getting shared parking. So it's not for lack of trying. Even the town staff got involved in trying to resolve this. Basically, that, that's the question. I, I'm assuming that, that was, that's that been gone through with CPDC <coughs> and, and all the hearings and, and so forth. I just, you know, we, we don't get that, so I just wanted to hear it from, from you. That, so the only other question I would have would be either from Andrew or, and or Mark, uh, what your feelings are in terms of uh, uh, the support of this. I, I assume that... Um, the police department, uh, if they got input, would say, "Yeah, we'd, we'd love to have that to get some of the some of the uh, parking off of the street and minimize the traffic." That's yes, a very we had a congested. We with town staff, and there was no objections, I guess, with the way it was. But it, I can see it very specific. We had engineering had us do a few things and so forth. We had a DRT, which is development review team, with internally with staff of various departments, planning, engineering, public safety. Um, no one, there weren't major objections to the plan and the proposed layout and that safety requirements. So. That's all I have. Um, uh, that's it. I, 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 uh, I, w I would support, you know, this, this whole premise, uh, this idea. I, I think any additional parking for the uh, property owner certainly is a benefit, benefit to the neighborhood. I know there is issues down there in Hopkins. Uh, and I do know that they used to, some customers used to park over at the uh, muffler shop there uh, and, cr and have to cross over from right. Hopkins. Yep. Certainly a, a safer cross there than 28. Absolutely. At that point uh, on that. When I first looked at this, the first question I had was, uh, would this warrant, you know, why, why are we uh, on a variance here as opposed to maybe a special permit or something, knowing that we just did a special permit uh, for something similar, uh, as John says, just north of here. Uh, but in this particular case, it sounds like a variance uh, is necessary, it's, or it's, it's felt a variance is necessary yeah, in this better particular there. case. In, yeah. in this case, so uh, in the short, but yeah, I I, uh, I don't have an issue, and I, I think it could be argued with the variance criteria that uh, you know they couldn't use this before uh, for a parking area because of wetland conditions. Now they can with the change in wetland bylaws. So to me, that certainly is a change in topography, change in soil conditions, etc. 
uh, and uh, I think it's a benefit to the town, benefit to the neighbors. I don't think it's going to be a, a, a any more major detriment to the neighborhood by putting tucking seven spaces behind the building there mm -hmm. at all. So that's kind of my feeling. So this one's actually really interesting to me. So usually when I look at the variance criteria, one and two are the hardest, and three or four are kind mm -hmm. of a given. But in this one, I see the applicant's argument for the shape of the lot being, you know, how they meet criteria one and the, the hardship of, you know, not losing customers, literally losing customers. But then I look about the public good and, you know, <coughs> degradating from the intent and purpose of law. And I see, you know, a butter who we've yet to hear from with some reasonable expectations that they're buying a property in this residential district and that that particular part behind them in your backyard is residential and you assume as long as you live that would be residential. I think that would be a fair assumption. Mm -hmm. So I'm tossed up in between. I look at Hopkins Street, again it's going into a residential neighborhood, it's in the residential zone, goes into it, but it's a two-way street, it's, it's got a line down the middle and the town's made some accommodations to park there. Um, so while I get the argument that getting that spillage off the street can offer some improvements. I just don't know if people are really upset that cars are parking on Hopkins Street to even begin with. Um, so I really I want to reserve judgment until I hear from the abutter. But that's what I'm thinking. I think my view is that what you're, what you're doing, I think, makes a lot of sense. Okay, you're taking land that's now been approved to do this mm. kind of thing, and. Uh, you're uh, making maximum use of it to solve a problem which you believe will affect the public on Hopkins. Uh, I, I, I'm going to open it up to the public here in a moment, and I would like to hear from So my name is Patricia DeVabney. You've name. been sworn in, right? Yep. So I'm opening this up to the public for coming okay. now, and I'll give you an opportunity to speak. All right. So um, my name is Patricia DeVabney. I'm a Hopkins Street abutter. And... Um, a lot of the conversation that was had prior to this meeting um, was from my from our vantage point, my husband and I, that when the initial site plan was approved, eight of the spots that were on site were supposed to have been designated for employees already. They were supposed to it, it was supposed to have signage that um, you know said employee parking only and um, Mr. Palmer never um, honored that part of the um, site plan approval along with several other things which I know probably don't involve you but the taking down of trees and vegetation and on and on and on without permits um, which is part of what's being appealed right now. And so had he, ha and so all of the parking or the majority of the parking on the street was employees and the employees park there, um, regardless of whether there are spots open in the lot or not. Sometimes there is ample parking in the lot and the employees still park on the street. So the seating capacity and everything for the restaurant has not changed to what was initially approved, which included the eight on-site parking spots. So to me, that should be, you know, that that's something that was addressed initially. And so... Um, I don't know, you know, that, that's the argument that I have right now, having um, the, the additional spots in the back. I mean, right now, n none of the parking in the back, there's not supposed to be parking of staff in the back alleyway. I mean, it's just every, anywhere there's availability to park people park whether they are designated spots or not and as a, a butter who's experienced the taking down of trees the taking down of vegetation without permits 
and then everything is like the last case done after the fact, it doesn't seem as though somebody who didn't honor things of the past would honor things of the future. So that's my concern, our, our concern. And there were other abutters at other proceedings, but then they, it was continued, 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 continued. I mean, the taking down of the trees for the second time without a permit happened last November, and we still haven't resolved that. The, there's mitigation from a time prior to that that still hasn't been resolved. So it's a little concerning from our perspective, you know? Uh, is there any other comment? Tony, do you have any comment? No, I put that one. I'll close the public portion. Any further comments? Yeah, in response, um, Patricia's comments on the trees have been an issue. Not really relevant here, but I didn't want to leave that open-ended so you'd understand what it was. There was an order of conditions. There was supposed to be some mitigation planting for those, order, for those trees that he was taking down for another project. Some of the trees were planted, not all of them. Those trees were planted in a spot that got killed by the snowplow activities. There was one or two that was still alive. It wasn't doing too good. Those were eventually removed. Some gravel was placed here to help with the snowplow activities. That's right here. Uh, and that's what her complaint is. And, and she makes a valid one that that condition of planting those trees needs to is still out there. It's been years. So what we did when Michael contacted me to do this new project and we talked to conservation, and they wanted it all wrapped up in a one. And I, Patricia has a problem with that because her issue, and it, we believe uh, we you took know, care Patricia of Patricia can speak for herself. Fine. I, you're right, Thank Patricia. Thank you. The issue that was brought up was that that mitigation planting from years ago is now incorporated in this plan. But how do we know this plan is going to get approved by everybody? So if this plan doesn't get approved by everybody, yourself included, how does that mitigation ever get taken care of? There was a condition added at the very end from the Conservation Commission to make sure that happened. So either this plan, the mitigation gets done with this plan, or if this plan doesn't go forward, the mitigation still has to go forward. So we think we've got covered coverage on the trees. However, that whole program has been appealed, so we're in abeyance waiting for that appeal to take place. And that appeal, as you read earlier, says don't do any work on the site. So we have to wait for that appeal. It should be any minute. They, usually the way DEP works, they go out in October. They usually decide within 70 days after that. We're in that, right about that 70-day period. So that should be coming up pretty soon. Um, as far as the seven spaces go, and I think there's been no, I don't, I don't again, I don't want to speak for Patricia, but I think everybody wants to, the, the cars off Hoffman Street. I don't think anybody doesn't want the cars off Hoffman Street, and this is the way. Patricia would like the employees to use the spots that they're supposed to be using to get the cars off Hopkins Street because it isn't patrons parking on Hopkins Street, and there's plenty of open spaces. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I'd like to add something. I didn't go to the, the visit because I didn't know that I was able to do that. If I, I thought I was just being notified, so that's my shortcoming that I should have looked into that, but it sh certainly wasn't like a lack of interest in what was going on. I'd also like to say that several of the spaces have been on, for the past several years, used for snow storage because I know that that's an issue on site also. So, I mean, in fairness, that's not fair either, you know? So, you know, I just, it's just our feeling as with other neighbors in the neighborhood that if the spots that were there already based on the occupancy of the restaurant were being utilized the way that they should be, and snow wasn't being stored on site, 
that it really wouldn't be an issue. It certainly wouldn't be an issue for the bulk, for the majority of the time that there's a need for maybe a few other spots. So for that to impact us all the time and to be basically surrounded by parking seems a bit unfair. You know, and I respect the conversation that you had earlier where you gave a lot of weight to the people that the last conversation was affecting. And I was thinking, you know, what's substantial? I know it's a terminology that's used as a basis of protocols that are in place for you and other agencies, but what's substantial to one person, you know, to them it's important, you know? I mean, granted, seven extra spaces or six if you don't count the one that's pulling in is, is advantageous maybe on a limited basis to the property owner, but, you know, it impacts the neighborhood Tr more trees are coming down in addition to trees that already came down without a permit two times at least, maybe more. And it just seems like, you know, <coughs> when is it going to be enough parking, you know? Okay. Thank you. Just a quick on that. Um, we are proposing a fence. If you looked at the plan, there's a... a Six foot fence on the property line or inside the property line on uh, eight arborvitae bushes and three uh, maple trees as part of the mitigation plan. To yeah, and personally, the an eight foot fence yeah. does not particularly, I don't want this giant, you know, I'd rather see trees, the trees that were out there that okay. were taken down than to see a giant fence out there. Thank you. And lastly, as far as the snow storage goes, we that's how we went from nine spaces to seven spaces, essentially, is to give some area for the trees and give some area for the snow storage. Okay. Our original plan was nine, and we cut that back. Well, I'm gonna respond and say, in the past, snow was stored on well over two spaces. Mark, do you have any comments to make at this point? I don't at this point. No, you don't. Okay. Any further, any further comments from the board? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah I, I just want to kind of clarify here. This has already gone through a couple of other uh, committees, you might say, boards here, Conservation Commission, uh, CPDC, and it's now with the Zoning Board. And what we're here for tonight is basically one issue. Mm -hmm. And that's to allow for seven additional spaces in an S15 zone on this parcel, period. That's it. We're not, we're not here to approve fences or anything in the past, what's mm -hmm. happened or anything else. We, we haven't been involved with that at all. So basically that's what we're here for tonight is the, just to decide on an issue for seven additional parking spaces in an S15 zone. On this. So can I... So maybe I don't know the process. I'm not like someone who's familiar with the process, but why would you have been involved in the last um, conversation about landscaping and lighting and all of that? Because that was not our, our purpose at all. We, we do not do site plan reviews per se. I think she was talking about the other hearing, the, the 40B hearing. hearing. Yeah. That was a 40B with this that was 40B. Yeah. Yeah. That was a totally so different situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I know that, like, at the um, prior, I, I guess there's one to come, right? So, like, that is where the discussion was going to potentially continue about the parking and all. On the street parking and all of that. So, you know, maybe that's the um, arena to be discussing that in. Okay. Maybe. Is there any further comment from the board? Okay. For being at.
asked to grant a variance. And I will entertain a motion to that extent. Nick, would you like to offer that? Oh, sure. Community planning that that would be yes. heard in. Yep. Okay. Yep. We'll revisit the site plan and the fencing and other. Areas. And would that be scheduled after this is concluded? Yes. I actually need to ask the for continuance to request for Monday's hearing. I would imagine it's up to you uh, if you want to come Monday or if you want to continue to. Continue if you need to. Yeah. Uh, I'll make them. Monday is the original CPDC hearing date, but we should continue to get through the appeal process and the zoning board. Okay. Sorry. I'll uh, move to grant the petitioner uh, Meisner Berm Corporation a variance from sections 4.52 and 5.3 of the zoning bylaws. Uh, in order to construct parking for existing commercial use in the S15 district for um, seven additional new parking spaces on the property located at 107 Main Street, Reading, Massachusetts, as depicted on the parking improvement plan and notice of intent plan. Prepared by looks like it's prepared by Miser Berm. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is prepared right. by Miser Berm Corporation. Get my name right this time. <laughs> and also um deed and certified by such. Stamped by Jeffrey Berm. Stamped by Jeffrey Berm. Brown. Dated. <laughs> dated 11 April. Dated. 2019. Dated April 11th, 2019. Uh, but revised. Revised. What's the revision date? The latest one is uh, September 5th, 2019. September 5th, 2019. I see. Yep, revision 4. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any red dates. Yeah, I don't see a red date on the one I got. Uh, so Are they in the corner somewhere? Yeah. That's right. Right. Yep. Up by the stand. Yeah, it's up by the yep. stand. Okay, right there. Web four. Got it. Web four. Yep. Yep. I don't think we need uh, yeah, any uh, foundation permits or occupancy permits or anything on this one. So. No, this is very. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, so we'll have, yeah. have a second. Second. All in favor? Five zero zero. Stand by and give you a stand. Sorry, did you say for me to stand by? I'm going to yeah. yeah. stamp this and give it to you. Can you place the other Street towards Stoneham. Yeah, I know. It's behind the restaurant. Make a left prior to the restaurant. This is the very first house on the right. Okay. Up bottom. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he's, dis he's disappeared. 
Because he, 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 the man who was here was in a funny. I know. I, no, the other I'm man. I'm only kidding, but uh, he left. He did. The applicant left. That was in a funny, not the applicant. That guy that was here? Oh. Yeah. So the applicant wasn't here tonight? I wish he Hmm. Well, how do we handle that one? <laughs> we can vote for a continuation and ask. Uh, we don't have any. We don't have any. We don't have anything from the applicant. Right. So, so, so uh, we, we can say. I, I would know. think, John. We're gonna. I, we can ask for a continue. We vote for a continuation mm -hmm. to a convenient to us, and we ask daytime government then to contact yeah. the applicant. Is he going to be here or what the next time? If not, we vote on it the next time. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. One chance. Yeah, I think you got to give him. Benefit of the doubt. Give him a chance. Yeah, I think One so chance. Too. I don't know. Okay. If no, if I don't know. I have no idea. So, so we'll give him a date. I haven't given him anything. I thought he was coming tonight. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so we could vote on continuing this to a yeah. date. Yeah. I am reluctant to continue. Oh, do, do we need to open it then? So formally yes. open it? I think we do. Yeah, I, I guess so. We do. Need I to guess formally we open do it. That. We could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is case 19 27. 374 Main Street. Zoning Board of Appeals with, will hold a public hearing in the Select Board's meeting room uh, at Town Hall, Lowell Street, Reading Mass, on Wednesday, December 4th at 7 p.m. Uh, yeah. by the applicant of Sign Art, Inc., on behalf of Wash Depot One, Inc., pursuant to MGL Channel 40, uh, Chapter 40A, uh, Section 10, for a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaw, Section is 452784, Paragraph F, 852 and 86, as may be determined by the Zoning Board to replace the existing freestanding sign with a new face that includes electronic messaging and to install a wall sign on the property located at 374 Main Street in Reading. I'll, uh, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the select board, police department, building department, health department, engineering division, town clerk, fire department, conservation commission, assessor's office, CPDC, members and associate members of the board of appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stone, Woburn, and Wilmington. Since there is no testimony, I don't have to read that part. Right. So, uh, since he left, since we, he didn't show, didn't show. Uh, <laughs> I would. Uh, I would recommend continuing to December. Ask for a no. I, I, what I was going to say. I was just that going to say that yeah, yeah, December eighteenth those, those, maybe. Those, the Met is coming on that night. I'm not going to get engaged in uh, spending the whole night on the Met and have him sit here. So I, I'd say let's put it into. Uh, we already have one on the 18th. We do. A t and continuation. That's go, and that's going to go first. I the dates. And that's going to go first, right? I would, I would have put the Met last tonight. I don't know. Well, well, but anyway. I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, anyway, what? But anyway. So be it. So I said we got to push it into January. Sure, so guys. It's like, uh, yeah, we got, we got, uh, we got 115. Oh, this is uh, 104 Salem is uh, mm -hmm. scheduled for, <laughs> for the next time. 104 Salem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, what we get? Last time I, saw it. I would say the first meeting in January. January. Was first meeting in January. When's the first meeting in January? There's only January. one in January. There's only one in January, so I say we look at that yeah. one. Yeah. You got it. And you can get a hold. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tony. Mr. Chairman, is there any issue with a continuance beyond a certain time period that the board needs to make a decision, otherwise it's instantly granted? It's an interesting question. It's a very it's covered in 48. I do not believe there is a time restraint. It's covered in 48. Oh. It's a variance application, so there's no yep. time restraint to issue a decision. Um, but if we do need an extension of time, I will certainly get one from the applicant. We, we have to open it within a... Right, which you did. Yeah. Which we did, yeah. which is the 60 yeah. days. I think it's 60 days. Six yeah. 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 And then we have to hear something... Um, from it. Is it. Isn't that right? The no, 48. Also, we have supposedly a, a 90 day period after that to register a decision. Brenda, yeah. To render if a decision. If we don't do anything, then it's going to. Then it's automatic, he gets uh, it. Yeah. You also have the option of, of taking a vote to cancel it right now. Right. I know. So I know. Time yeah. constraints being put on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
you know, no shows, no contact. Uh, we already went through this last month. Well, we went through some that didn't show like three or four times, except sending a letter in, and that wasn't appropriate. I think we... we, we yeah, the boy didn't even receive a letter on this one. I know. It's no, we didn't receive any of these, right. Okay. Uh, January what now? 15th. 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 Yeah. Uh, I'll make that motion. Then? I'll make that motion that... I'll make a motion that we continue case number 19-27, seeing as the applicant is not present tonight, to January 15, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Hillary? Hillary did? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. You might want to explain that okay. to him. I mean, he may find the 15th of January is not good. Yeah. It's but on the other hand, if, he, if January, if he doesn't show on January fifteenth, no then we're probably going to sh shut it down. Okay. Yep. Got it. All right. It's late. I'll right, entertain right. a motion to adjourn. Okay. Yeah. So moved. Second. Sure. Second. All in favor? Minutes. <laughs> 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 True. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. This goes to. So. So what, is, what is the status on uh, 104? Um, you know what? I have to call them. Oh. <laughs> they've moved the house. Okay. They are they looking for the foundation. I don't oh. know how the snow affected that. So I have to. Well, get I mean, that. Mark said if that house crumbles, right. it's only it's still snow. From scratch. Yeah, 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 it's all, I know. No, I drive by it every day. I'm like, storm. Oh, man. Right. Do I want it? They're going to want it. <laughs> Buy it. Well, they, then they can reapply. That's, That's what I said. I'm surprised how high they put it up, too. I know. <laughs> it's almost like, like <laughs> do they need like 20 logs? Like railroad <laughs> ties out there. Right. I mean, it's crazy. They well, dug it down so far. <laughs> <laughs> I drive by it every night. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> there are no new cases. Oh, anyway. <laughs> 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 <laughs>